all um, all guests on this Zoom channel um, will use the chat feature to um, throw questions and comments in um, as protocol. We may break protocol from time to time in the Q and A sessions, but have your kind of reflections and questions come in through chat. And a huge mahalo for being here and supporting us. We're waiting for just a couple of other people to find their way into the room and then we will get started. Thank you for joining us today. For all guests in the room, we'll be using the um, chat box um, to throw in our questions and um, uh, to throw in our comments. Um, we may break protocol from time to time, but we'll primarily be using the chat, which you will see blown up with wonderful encouragement from the other Nalukai founders. Mahalo for being here. All right, founders, you ready? Let's get some, some big nods here. Here we go. <clears throat> Aloha kako. I'm David Clark, Executive Director of Nalukai Academy. Greetings to our visitors joining us from across the islands as well as from those on the continent. For the past five years, Nalukai brings together some of Hawaii's most ambitious and enterprising young people students from across the islands who attend public, private, charter, and home schools to get to know each other exceptionally well in order to work collaboratively to explore the tenets of social, cultural, and technological entrepreneurship. This year, in response to COVID-19, global pandemic, and social distancing guidelines, we decided to run the program virtually. Though in previous years, we have had an online pre-work portion of Nalukai, we frankly weren't sure if we could deliver as impactful of a program as our graduates have reported we have. But we decided that we didn't want to, want to ask kids to wait, to put their goals on hold, to put their ambitions on the back burner. And so we are pleased that we decided to reformat Nalukai's summer startup program it wasn't an easy endeavor, and I'm so grateful to everyone who lent a hand to the creation of this project. But most of all, I'm grateful to the students, our founders, who heeded the call to put their back into this, to form meaningful, trusting relationships with each other, and to work tirelessly to craft solutions to challenges they see Hawaii facing in the upcoming years. What they have accomplished during the last two weeks is staggering. I hope you love their projects as much as we do. And I hope you can see them as just one important part of a much grander journey of discovery, exploration, and growth, both individually and as a cohort that they have taken together. One person who has helped them along their hero's journey has been a Nalukai board member, an astonishing astonishingly effective Kumu or teacher and a cultural practitioner and voyager, Kumu Pua Lincoln. I've asked her to help welcome you and to talk to the founders about their journey and why she comes to Nalukai. Pua, thank you for joining us. Aloha kako ena makamaka o keia pai aina mai kahiki mai akala i hae hae ai ka it's awesome to see everybody today and these amazing students, um, not to mention their amazing, amazing mentors and leaders, as well as previous alum who have returned to help to lead and guide this year's cohort. I've been um, probably a part of the summer startups in some way, small or another, um, for the past three summers now. And I have to say this summer has probably been one of the most impactful ones for me to see this magical team deliver um, an incredible start of camp completely virtually. And I think what the power of, of that has actually been each of these individual students here on the screen actually being home, being rooted and grounded in a place that has defined who they've been and who they are and who they'll continue to grow into um, in their near futures. And uh, to watch them go through that journey and to hear the testimon testimonies from 
their instructors and teachers um, has been amazing. So congratulations first to Nanukai's Academy's instructors, um, Davy's amazing magical team, and all the people who make it happen. Mahalo nui to each of you because we all know that doing things virtually is a hundred times harder than doing it face to face. But to know that through this screen, there's been an ability to still connect to each of these students, Vairua, their spirit, their soul, the thing that makes them tick and work um, is just incredible. So you, your team definitely deserves an award for that, um, Davy. Mahalo nui. To each of the students who decided to show up every and each day for, I'm gonna assume sometimes an average of 10 hours a day, working as a team, working, as, working and collaborating together to create these amazing projects and really these amazing solutions to things that they're passionate about today it has been awesome. I will continue to support Nalukai because I believe in what Nalukai creates, independence, it creates positivity, it creates this ability for each individual and student to kind of envision that island that they're gonna be sailing to and create the perfect course to it. So mahalo nui to each of you um, for steering your va'a and for allowing other people to be aboard with you. You've done an incredible job and I can't wait to see what you put together. Ahui ho. Thank you so much, Pua, for joining us today and for adding your inspiration, your mana'o, your wisdom um, throughout the camp. She encouraged the students on the first day to undertake a voyage similar to the ones she has taken and navigated um, across oceans, literally. Um, and they rose to the challenge, to say the least. I'd like them now to introduce themselves. Um, I will ask you to take turn taking yourself off mic or off, put yourself on mic, uh, off mute, and um, to give us your name, where you live, and where you go to school, or if you just graduated, where you went to school, and where you might be going in the fall. So uh, we'll do this just one at a time. Make sure everybody goes, please. Who'd like to start us off? Sure, I'll go ahead. Um, Sorry, Jaden, did you want to go? Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Nainoa. I live on the island of Oahu in Kapalama, and I go to Kamehameha School in Kapalama. Hi, my name is Jaden. I am from Waimea, Big Island, and I go to Parker School. Hi, my name is Cole. I'm from Oahu, and I go to Punahou School. Hi, my name is Pakella. Um, I'm from the Big Island and I go to Kamehameha. Hi, I'm Kea Klepsch. I'm from Kona on the Big Island and I'm from Kealakehe. Hi, Hi, I'm Katrina. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Hi, I'm Katrina Kuo. I go to Kalani High School on the island of Oahu. Hi, I'm Dyson. I live in Honolulu on Oahu and I just graduated uh, as a homeschooled high schooler. Hi, my name is Natalie Toma. I live on Oahu and I go to Iolani School. Hi, my name is Kailu Tugako and I live in Hilo on the Big Island and I go to Kamehameha Kia'au. Hi, my name is Oshina Kao. I'm from Hilo, Hawaii and I go to Kamehameha Hawaii. Hi, my name is Bor Shin and I go to Wanlua High School and I'm from Oahu. Hi, my name is Sammy Kutch. I'm from the Big Island of Hawaii. I just graduated from Kealakehe and I'll be going off to the college in the fall. Hi, I'm Joshua Parker. Um, I'm from Hawaii, Kai, Oahu, and I go to Kamehameha School's Kapalama. Hi, I'm Caden Brown. Um, I'm from Eva Beach on Oahu, and I'm going into my senior year at Hawaii Technology Academy. Aloha, my name is Faith Christy Sullivan. I'm from Maui, Hawaii, and I go to Maui High School. Hi, my name is Rai. Um, I'm in Waimea on the Big Island. I just graduated from HPA. My name is Krista Lopez. I go to Waipahu High School, and I live on Oahu. Um, hi, my name is Jessica Lee. Oh, go, go. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Jasmine Valoria. 
I go to Maui High on the island of Maui, Hawaii. Hi, my name is Jessica. I live in Hilo, Big Island, and I go to Haas. I'm Kai, and I go to Kauai High. Uh, hello, my name is Joseph Jimenez. I'm on Big Island, just graduated from Kealake, and I'll be going to RIT for college. Hi, um, I'm Aaron Chang, and I just graduated from Punahou. Aloha, I'm Josh. Um, I'm from Kula Maui, and I go to Kamehameha Schools, Maui. Hi, I'm Jade Frank. Um, I'm from Kapahulu, Oahu, and I just graduated from Kamehameha. Did, I think that's everybody. Did we miss anybody? And what you witnessed is one of the challenges, one of many challenges of connecting online. Who gets to speak when we both start talking at the same time? It's one of the challenges that these founders uh, encountered, um, still working on solving that, that particular one. Um, this year, we took a little bit of a different approach um, with our virtual program. Um, well, a very different approach in a lot of ways, because usually um, we would have brought everyone together um, to a campus where we, they, got, they would get to dorm together, eat together, um, live together and undertake our, our program. This year we did not have that luxury. And so it was a tough decision. Um, but when we decided to do it, we went all in. And uh, the students in front of you that just introduced themselves um, responded magnificently. They taught us in many ways um how to make, make the most out of out of this technology we were worried about how they were going to connect with each other that's always been a big part of what we do here um, is using social emotional learning uh helping them form bonds and bridges between each other to see their commonalities um to see the challenges that they wanted to work on together it's obviously difficult to do um but they showed us how to do it and uh, one of the things that, they, that they, they taught us about was the importance of using the chat. Um, so in addition to connecting one-on-one -on -one and asking a question and getting a response, oftentimes students would, would respond to each other in the chat. And the way that they took care of each other, the way that they encouraged each other, the way that they supported each other has become something we've all relied on. It's one of those things that as we go back, hopefully, um, to doing a live camp, I'm, gonna th I'm going to completely miss. Being able to see a scroll of encouragement at all times um, is a very nice validating uh, part of the process that these, that these founders um, have utilized. And um, I believe that if you ask any of them, they, they uh, will let you know that they've appreciated the cohort. They've appreciated the diversity, um, the group that we've brought together from four different islands to come together, from public school, private school, charter school, um, and homeschool uh, without regard to economic background. It's, a, it's one of the few places that students have a chance to gather in that way. Certainly some sports teams do it, um, but there are not a lot of chances for people to come together in the way that this group has. So we are tremendously proud of them. We hope that you see um, the results of, of their um, intense diligence and work um, and collaboration. And as I said before, it's just the tip of the iceberg. What they formed with each other is a network that they'll be able to rely on as we go forward, joining about 115 other um, alumni who've gone through the Nalukai Academy program over the last uh, five years. We're so proud of you. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to our master of ceremonies, um, Nalukai's own Mr. Aaron Shorn, who will uh, let us know uh, procedures for going forward and asking questions and the format of, uh, of the day. Mr. Shorn, please take it away. Thank you so much, David Clark, Nalukai's executive director and just wonderful human being at all. Um, I'm proud and privileged to emcee this event. Um, I'll try to keep my excitement to a minimum and not jump out of my chair or scream too loudly. Um, so protocols are that um, because um, we're doing things digitally, we had our uh, founders, what we call our Nalukai students, our founders pitches pre-recorded. Um, those um, close to seven minute pre-recordings will be followed by a 10 minute question and answer 
for each team, which will be live. Um, we're excited for them to not just share the ventures they're putting out into the world, but the learning, the, um, the, the bonds that were formed here and their growth um, and how they're gonna carry that forward. Um, so we're gonna start um, in just um, one minute um, with our first team. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for being here. Um, I think that when Nalukai was founded by Bub Monsef, his vision was to create an ecosystem of youth entrepreneurs that had access to technology, um, mentors, and most importantly, a community of like-minded um, Hawaii entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to stay um, or to leave and return to make change within existing businesses. And that has happened through the work of um, these magical um, facilitators, cultural practitioners and industry mentors, we've been able to create that community. And most importantly, from our over 100 Nalukai alumni, we've been able to um, kind of set that into motion. Um, we're really grateful that everyone's here. Um, we're gonna give it just a, a minute while I queue up a couple things. Um, just to, uh, a reminder um, for those um, to both in the Zoom call and on the YouTube live, to add your comments and your questions and fill up that chat box, throw in your words of encouragement and mana'o and um, really um, kind of let's make that time extremely fruitful. Um, for the founders, that question and answer period is your time to continue to share um, what you might not have gotten to. Um, and yeah, um, David, we have about a minute. Any kind of words before we dive in? I would just add that people are, are welcome to add uh, questions to either the, uh, the chat if you're in Zoom or on the YouTube live link, you're welcome to do that. We have two people monitoring that um, and we'll push forth those questions so that um, we can ask um, students about their projects. Um, as we get towards the end of the um, uh, of each group's presentation. Uh, if there are other questions that come up around the process in general, the, pro the, uh, the program, um, please feel free to write them in the chat as well. We, uh, we really thank you for your interest and for, um, for logging in today. Um, it gives the students a chance to, um, our founders a chance to speak um, to a larger audience and to have a real uh, uh, milestone moment as they, as they, as the culmination of the, the huge work that they've done together. And again, we're just so proud of you. All right. Well, with that said, we're going to start with our first team, Team Maile Makeke, from dirt to doorstep. Austin, please share. Aloha, Maika. We are Maile Makeke an Oahu-based company delivering your food from dirt to doorstep. We connect you with farm fresh produce through an easy to use website. Mylan Makeke is the best of two worlds. It's like local farmers meets Uber Eats. We have a dream, a dream where everything we eat comes from Hawaii, our home. To achieve this dream, a group of committed high schoolers created Mylan Makeke, a platform where online grocers provide local produce and same day delivery to people like you. By bridging the gap between producers and consumers, we strengthen Hawaii's food security, thereby turning our dream into a reality. Team Mylan Maakeke is composed of five of the most passionate high school students in Hawaii. We're all raised in Hawaii, grew up eating local, and lived through the everyday issues that our islands face. Allow us to introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Caden Brown from Ever Beach, Oahu. I think Hawaii's food security is important not only to support local business, but also protect and feed our islands in the case of an emergency. I'm Dyson Chi from Honolulu, and I'm passionate about protecting our island and ocean for future generations to enjoy. I am Jaden from Big Island, and although I have little experience in gardening, I want to take part in creating more inclusive communities supporting local farmers. Oh, no. I'm Joshua Parker from Hawaii Kai, and as a regular worker at Kaka'o'o'i'vi and Pai Pai Ohe'ia, 
I wanted to provide a platform for local farms to sell their produce. Hi, I'm Ocean Akau from Hilo, Hawaii, and living on Hawaiian Homes Agriculture Alliance and being a part of the Kiokaha Fauna Farmers Association has shown me the importance of self-sustainability. This is the team, and this is our dream. Take it away, Ocean. Thank you, Dyson. A big problem here in Hawaii is that we experience severe food insecurity. We rely so heavily on imported food and goods to sustain ourselves. The state of Hawaii imports 85 to 90% of our food. With a single natural disaster, we could be cut off in an instant. Even then, our state supply of food would last no more than a few, than a few days. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, Hawaii has also seen the closure of many businesses. With the combination of lack of tourism and most Hawaii residents choosing to buy imported goods, many local businesses have been forced to close. In addition, the pandemic has also caused a lack of accessibility and convenience when it comes to buying groceries. Simply going to the store has become challenging for safety reasons. We have come up with a solution that reduces the gap and creates a shortcut from farmers to families. Our solution is a website and application platform where customers order locally sourced produce and products. This platform creates a more self-sustainable society. Families will eat healthy in a more convenient way while supporting hardworking local businesses. Mila McKicka improves your home cooking experience and makes it easy to access the things you need. Here, a family will need to purchase some produce for their meal. They simply hop on our website or use our app to select what they need. They then can pay online and put their address for delivery. The farmers that we partner with will get a notification through our app where it tells them what orders are placed. The farmers then pack the listed products and produce and get them ready for pickup. Our delivery vehicles will pick up their order and deliver it straight to their doorstep. Like Dyson said, we're taking the best of two worlds. It's like local farmers meets Uber Eats. There are 311,000 households in Oahu that contribute to the $357 million of agricultural revenue in Hawaii per year. We want to sell to 3,000 of those households within the next two years. Of the 7,300 farms in Hawaii, we aim to partner with 300 Oahu farms in the next two years. Our business model is to take a 10% service fee on every order as well as a fixed $10 delivery fee. Currently, we are shooting for 3,000 active users by 2022. This provides us approximately 52,000 orders per year, giving us a net revenue of $178,000 per year. As we expand and reach more households, this would increase significantly. We only sell 100% local produce, we are a local business, we offer same-day delivery, and we are open daily. And we have a customizable selection of produce. As you can see, our competitors do not offer these benefits. So what can we do to help? Thank you, Kaden. The team of Maile Makeke is here to ask local farms to partner with us to expand our company. By joining Maile Makeke, we market and sell your produce around Oahu. We take the complexity and hassle out of transporting produce and allow you to directly interact with customers. On the other hand, if you're interested in having access to local produce at the tip of your fingers, download our app or visit our website today. Our team is asking for an initial investment of $200,000, which will fund our, our marketing efforts, electric delivery vans, and delivery drivers opening salaries. Join Maile Makeke today to make Dirt to Doorstep a reality. Mahalo no kohooloheana mai. Thank you for listening and aloha. That was a fantastic job. Can we all give them some virtual snaps? From YouTube to Zoom, let the virtual snaps unite us. Can I get the team to unmute? Yes, you can, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> Josh Parker, the first question is for you. How did you connect Nalukai to your passions and interests? Um, well, it was when we were um, trying to group together and, and create our teams, it was sort of grouped by our passions and our interests in terms of the problems that we want to solve in Hawaii. So just by the groupings of, of the teams, it sort of 
allowed us to express our interests a little bit more because we were grouped with people with similar interests. And through um, Malama Keke, we were really able to um, address the issues and our interests in making Hawaii more sustainable for us all. Fantastic. So questions now can go to anyone in the group. Feel free to lovingly interrupt or to pause and let the others speak. The first is a comment from our very own Austin Stewart, Director of Curriculum at Nalukai. Really nice job on the user experience, got it 100%. You guys did a great job. Another comment comes in from Taylor Ho on YouTube. Interesting how the COVID pandemic is highlighting this problem. Really timely product. When you as a team thought about what's going on in the world right now, how did that help you in the ideation process and in the solution process? Uh, I guess coming from, I guess I could I could speak um, a little bit to that. If anyone else wants to add at any time though, just feel free to. I think part of what Naluka has really taught us is to look at all these problems that we're having, right? We have so many problems in this world today, the pandemic just being one big umbrella problem to many smaller issues. And to look at that instead, instead of saying, oh my goodness, that's insane. There are so many problems. Instead of looking at that and be like, oh my gosh, there are so many opportunities in here. So many things that we can change to make Hawaii a better place than it was pre-pandemic. And so that kind of thinking really helped us to shape our project idea. Anyone else want to jump in? Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of, of right now what's happening with the pandemic and, and having to stay inside and, and kind of live in this virtual world, I think we kind of saw, saw that as, as a problem of, you know, some people not wanting to go out to grocery stores and, and buying their product and their produce. Um, so definitely coming up with part of the solution of being able to deliver for other people and still keep that social distancing and, and make sure everything is safe. I think that was really important for our solution. Awesome. So we have another question that comes that came in from Chris Camp. Part of the Nalukai experience is customer discovery. Tell us about what you learned by talking to your you to your end users. Someone else can answer that. I've talked too much already. <laughs> Um, for myself and talking to just people out in the community, um, they all express they want to support local businesses and that they want to support local farmers, just that they don't have access to their produce. Not all big name stores sell local produce, so it's hard for people to try and get out there to find the produce that they want to support. So making a product that bridges customers with local farmers was something that was expressed throughout the customer talk sessions. Ocean, in this process of taking, looking at a problem, um, uh, going through this customer discovery and solutions, what was really meaningful to you? What, what resonates and what's going to stick with you? For me personally, um, what resonated the most was how much um, thoughts that the community already has. Like a lot of the ideas that we came up with were stuff that people told us when we talked to them. So they already kind of know like what kind of solutions are out there. It's just putting it to the test and actually carrying it through. Thank you. We have a question that comes in from YouTube from Kea E. Warfield. How did you come up with the name, Maile Makeke? Um, so actually, uh, we came up with the word Maile because it is a type of vine. And so that was kind of like a symbol for our company. We're kind of bringing everything together um, and kind of being like the roots and the vines connecting the, the local farmers to uh, local families. Um, and then makeke means market. So we're like, you know, we're trying to create a, a virtual, basically market and delivery service. Thank you. Um, this next question comes in from um, Nalukai mentor and friend, Alan Murabayashi. He says, great job gang. Question is, when there is a customer service problem, example, bad produce, who's responsible for the resolution? Great question. Well, it would most likely be on the, the farmers if, if the produce was bad itself because we're merely delivering it. 
So if unless it somehow went bad on our side of it, it would be on whoever produced it. So yeah, we have I another go for it. Said, um, when the farmers uh, give their produce to our delivery uh, people, there's going to be sort of like a checkpoint where both of the people are going to make sure that the produce is good and that it's fresh. And if something happens in between that process of the delivery, then we are, of course, going to be responsible. But up until that point, the farmers are going to be 100% responsible for their produce. Another question that came in from Stephanie Rips on YouTube. Are prices cheaper or comparable to other food delivery services? Great question. Um, so there... They're similar to other delivery services. Um, <clears throat> the uh, service fee is a little higher than some other services, but you're kind of paying a premium to get local local goods that were produced here. But it's it's fairly similar to other services. We have a question coming in from YouTube. Thank you, YouTube Live, for all your wondrous chats. This question is from Mio Chi. Is there a membership fee? Is the ten dollar delivery fee fee a flat rate, no matter how much you order? Great question. Um, I guess I'll answer that. So, uh, currently, no. The membership there's no membership fee. We we're looking at maybe having a um, premium service where you'd have a free delivery, like a subscription you'd pay. But um, the, yeah, the ten dollar delivery fee is a flat. Right. So every order you have to pay the ten dollar delivery fee unless we did do a premium subscription service. But yeah. awesome. We have a question from May Somali, Nalukai facilitator and industry mentor. She says, When are you coming to California? As soon as you invest in our company. <laughs> Good answer. So I guess the answer is then tomorrow. There we go. May, May, do you have another question to ask the team directly or um, a comment you'd like to share? Yeah, I'm wondering when you begin your operations, what's one question you still have unanswered that you're hoping to learn from your first few deliveries? I guess one of the questions that I guess I've had is how much produce can the farmers provide? Um, right? Currently, one of the problems we have is that there's not enough local produce being provided um, in some areas. And in other areas, it just sometimes feels like there's not enough demand. So it's how, how we're going to continue to, I guess, move forward as a business and still maintain, I guess, that balance, right? how are we going to make sure that there's enough supply and enough demand? And so that's a question that I certainly don't know the answer to. And I think our team has been grappling with for a bit. It's an awesome point. Um, this is a kind of um, taking us back, um, kind of more learning process question. Um, the question is for um, Jaden. Um, Jaden, what was this experience like? throughout Nalukai and through launching a venture that is real and impacts people? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really great. We, we tried to come up with an idea that would help sustain the island. And I think we had a lot of different ideas at first, but, but going through the process and, and really thinking about, you know, personally, our lives um, and, you know, how we eat and how we sustain ourselves and how we could better that and then kind of take that into a business and then help better the community. Um, I think that's kind of what led to the solution. And thank you. Yeah, it was great. I mean, for you, for you as a, as a teenager, what has it been like to kind of join this community? How do you carry it forward? Um, it's definitely not every day that you uh, hop onto zoom calls with <laughs> 40 other people that you have never met in person and uh, really sh share like 10 hours a day, literally. Um, but it's been an amazing experience. I feel like I know everyone personally. Um, and it, it just, it's, it's really great. Thank you. I, I think a huge part of our mission and vision at Nalukai is to challenge the status quo 
of what entrepreneurship looks like um, and what it feels like. And I think your team has done a great job. Um, Josh Parker, I, I think you represent that so well. You've tied this to your culture, your ancestry and who you are. Um, can you speak to how that lives in your experience here and, and in the product that you've created? Yeah, so originally um, Ocean and I really came up with this idea of a bartering system because that was sort of what our ancestors have did have done for hundreds of years with the Ahupua system. So that really kind of inspired our idea to bring together um, the community and connect local farmers with um, local families. And obviously our name is, is in Ola Hawaii and we tried to incorporate as many aspects of the Hawaiian culture into our company as possible. Um, and we're just really trying to relive that sustainable lifestyle that we were accustomed to and that we know that we can live because we have been doing that for hundreds of years. And yeah, that's, that's really inspired our company to become the one that it is right now. Thank you so much. Josh, in, in the chat, can you add a link to the website and a link to Instagram or social media? I and then, can. thank you so much. And then Jack, can you transfer that into YouTube just so we have that? And we'll do that with every single group. Um, we have about a minute left. Um, Ocean, I want to I want to pass the floor back to you and talk about what being on a team virtually was like and how you um, kind of transcended the difficulty of doing this. Um, definitely working online was different. It was a different experience, but I'd say it was a great experience. Um, now every day you get to work with people that are actually passionate about what you what you're working on and being in a group that was so passionate about the issue at hand and just putting something out there that everyone would appreciate was really nice. Um, yeah. Ocean, if you could describe um, this moment or this experience in one word, what would it be? Definitely excited, a little relieved. <laughs> um, but yeah, excited that everyone gets to see what we've been working on. Dyson, if you could explain this, this experience um, just throughout the last couple of days in one word, what would it be? Just one word. I can't, just one I can't word string it. or string it along. <laughs> I guess it's, if I have one word, it's magical. Um, yeah, it's, it's just absolutely magical. Josh and you? Um, Zoom, I mean, it's pretty much the only thing that we've been doing. <laughs> That's the most accurate represent representation of this camp. But Zoom on steroids with all dashes in between those words. What's been the most impactful part of this journey? Um, I'll just say getting to know everyone, of course. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's a breath of fresh air to know that there's really people that are passionate about the issues that are surrounding Hawaii especially around the same age, it gives me a lot of hope and it gives me a lot of energy to go ahead and keep trying to address those issues and to try to bring together this community of young entrepreneurs and problem solvers in Hawaii. Jaden, how about you? Um, the, the one word thing? Sure. Um, I, I, would, I would say it's, it's pretty life-changing. It's a good hyphen right there. Thank you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with one final question because I really like it. It's from Kiai again. Has Maile Makeke thought about taking produce from local residents, community who are not necessarily farmers, but have produce available? That is a really good question. Um, so that's kind of what we were originally thinking about. That was, however, um, you have to get regulate the, the agriculture department would yeah, the regulation, you can't just sell any produce. Um, yeah, unless you're an actual farm, a registered farm. So it kind of gets into who's responsible if something's wrong with it or, yeah, yeah. so it's difficult. Well, team, thank you so much for sharing a part of yourselves and that bright Q&A. Can we do some snaps, guys? Um, our next team is Team Nalima Kokua, Eradicating Invasive Species.
Moho mai kako e nahoa, mai kumoku o ke ave, ahi hiki ni ihao o kahele lani. A warm welcome to all, from the big island of Hawaii to the island of Niihau, aloha. We are Nali Mokokua. We all live in Hawaii. We are a team of avid hikers who love to dive deep into the Kuahivi, the native ecosystems that make Hawaii exceptionally beautiful and unique. We also have a strong connection to our Hawaiian culture and deep roots to our Kulaivi, our native homeland of Hawaii. Nali Mokokua literally translates to the helping hands. We educate local community members about invasive species and connect them with conservation opportunities. Our goal is to create a tight-knit hui, or group, focused on the preservation of Hawaii's unique ecosystems and cultural identities by making Hawaii conservation much more present in the online space. We strive towards an invasive-free Hawaii in which local communities regularly come together to malama ba'aina that provides for all of us. Invasive species are disrupting the biodiversity of native ecosystems, causing the extinction of many native species and destroying native land. And we have identified three major problems of this problem, biodiversity loss, a loss of culture, and a lack of awareness. Biodiversity refers to the variety and balance of species in a given area and is vital to the resilience of ecosystems. This resiliency protects native species from disease and other disasters which can then spill over into agriculture and have significant economic impact. The land is also an intrinsic part of Hawaiian culture. When we lose native species, we are losing traditions that have been practiced here for centuries. This isn't to say that there aren't many conservation organizations in Hawaii. There are, but there's a significant gap between them and the larger community. And this is at least partially due to their lack of an online presence. This limited online presence restricts their ability to connect with environmentally motivated and technologically minded youth populations. So, oh, what else solutions? Through social media, we'll be raising awareness about invasive species, specifically by creating a social media campaign to encourage followers to use the hashtag Invasive Free Hawaii and post a photo of themselves with a native plant. Our web platform will serve as a hub of resources on both education and ways to get involved in conservation volunteer opportunities. We will collect information from both local conservation organizations and consolidate it into one engaging and easy to navigate online space. This information will be available to everyone through our website, but we will also offer membership that give additional opportunities organized and run by our organization. With the ongoing health, uh, public health emergency regarding COVID-19, many workdays have been halted or limited. So we have been largely focusing on education. We are looking to partner with schools to provide environmental education and volunteer opportunities for students who have hourly requirements, usually 60 per year. So what is our user experience? First, our users would open up the website and decide on which membership plan works best for them. Once a member, we will send out newsletters twice a month that includes conservation opportunities and cultural tours for our members to more deeply engage with the land. Then you can join us on a cultural tour where we have cultural experts teach you about native species, their cultural significance, and also the invasive species that are threatening their existence. That day, we supply you with the tools and equipment so that you can get your hands dirty and have a part in the removal of those invasive species. This is our market quadrant. Our two accesses consist of what we value the most, accessibility and community integration. Community integration helps in attracting and sustaining members to participate for our cause. Accessibility keeps our options simple and attractive, helping us grow our community. What makes us different? We make it more convenient and accessible for our users to sign up for invasive species removal days, while also weaving an education on invasive and native species here in the islands and connecting with local schools. We offer a free membership that allows access to educational resources and public events and tours. Our standard version is a paid membership, which offers extras such as a newsletter, free gift, and access to private events. We'll be having tours for visitors to the island as a way to balance their carbon footprint from traveling here and to create an authentic and meaningful Hawaii experience. We also offer a private group event for businesses where they can participate in invasive species removal activities to create a better work ethic and an environment and build teamwork. Here we have our market audience. There are 560,000 people in the demographic of residents 18 to 65. According to a recent study, 57% of Hawaii residents volunteer and 13% of residents consider the environment the state's most important issue. Using those numbers, we get a target audience of about 42,000. If only 
5% of those people who sign up for a membership the first year, we make $600,000. We also offer tours, 10 million tourists visit Hawaii a year. 57% of them participate in ecotourism. If only 1% of those people that participated in ecotourism took one tour with us, we would make around $4,500,000. Then our revenue equates to $5.16 million. Some of the traction we have received is on our Instagram page. We have 143 followers. Since our website launched four days ago, we have had 250 page views which 11 have subscribed to our mailing list. Our page views are steadily and constantly growing. This traction shows that people are interested in being educated about native species loss and interested in our service. Um, I'm Jessica, the project manager. I love sailing, hiking, and I love the Hawaiian culture. I'm Sammy, I'm our chief technical officer, and I love photography and environmental stewardship. I'm Kai, and I love the environment. I'm Joshua, the vision lead. I'm here to share cultural knowledge and I'm very passionate about the Aina. I'm Krista, I'm working on marketing and relations. I'm an avid hiker and a nature admirer. We are the future of Hawaii and we want to pave the way to an invasive free Aina. What do we need? We are seeking for partnerships with conservation organizations, partnerships with local high schools, $200,000 to get started, access to app developers, and for you to get involved. We must act Ikei Manava right now and not a moment later. A huge aspect of Hawaiian culture is Aloha Aina, caring for the land, the land that provides for us. Part of Aloha Aina is preserving our native species and combating invasive threats. It is extremely important to follow in our Hawaiian ancestors' footsteps and act as kia'i, guardians, servants, and stewards of our sacred Aina. We hope that you join our hui in pursuit of an invasive free Hawaii. Mahalo nui no koho'oloheana mai. Thank you so much for listening. Fantastic job. A beautiful presentation. So many comments flowing in about how clean the slide deck was, how on point, just, just the, the voiceovers and everything. And then that's not even talking about the business plan itself. Um, can I get someone to talk about what it means to launch this out into the world? Um, okay, so I guess I could talk about that. I think for our group, it was just an incredible opportunity to be, have the opportunity to actually launch this and make a difference in our community. I think a lot of youth don't get that opportunity and they feel like their voice isn't heard. But suddenly with Nalakai, all of us could come together and collaborate on something that means a lot to us and we would have the resources to put it together. Jessica, um, what was the most important moment um, when, you're, when you were in that team leader Zoom um, that you can pull from that led to this incredible presentation? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Could you repeat the question? Sorry. It, it, what moment stood out to you from the past couple days as you worked with your team? I think it was the moment when it actually clicked in all of our heads. Because when you're working on a project like this, there are moments when you kind of like, we, you don't really know what you're doing and you kind of just like feeling your way through it. But there was a moment when all of us just suddenly snapped and we got this, this vision in our head and we we're able to implement that. And I think that was the coolest thing ever to have that collaboration with so many people and be able to put it into place. Um, I wanna break protocol um, and have um, a facilitator and mentor Courtney Gussick, ask her question and comment. Thank you, Erin. Wonderful job, team. I have a question about if there's any potential for a further iteration, um, partnering with businesses or craftspeople who might be leveraging the invasive species to actually make products for it to potentially sell to these people on these tours to take home and out of the state. I guess I could speak on, uh, I can uh, speak on this. Um, it was like one of our original plans once we get up and rolling to partner with local businesses who utilize those invasive species. So whatever we remove at our removal days, we'd be able to donate those um, resources to you just so you could grow your business. And that way we're just building a, an even more tight knit hui and we're just branching out and supporting local businesses. So that's awesome. definitely, that was definitely what we were hoping to plan for in the future. Very cool. Thank you. 
So we have a question in from May Somali. What activities do you suspect will be the most popular? I'm just going to sit in this beautiful, awkward silence. Someone jump in. That's a oh. really interesting question um, that uh, I don't know if we ever really considered as a team. From personal experience, I would I can't suspect that. Can everyone hear me? I think. Cool. From personal experience, I would suspect that um, cultural types um, would really appeal to a lot of tourists who are using our business, um, but there's a wide variety. I think if we really, when we connect to a lot of environmentally minded and motivated young people, um, removal days um, that are connected to a community mindset would really appeal to a lot of people, especially if they do volunteer hours for high school, things like that. Thank you. Um, we have uh, a comment in from Kay Lau on YouTube. Nalima Kokua, your presentation was clear and inspiring. The ecotourism angle is good to see. You rocked with an exclamation point. Another question coming in from YouTube from Tina Lopez. What are your next steps? Great question. As a team, I think something we have recognized is that COVID-19 might stop the tourism uh, for at least momentarily and everything. So we really, as we mentioned in the presentation, we do want to focus on the education side of things, which we thankfully are able to do online. Um, we do want to focus on it on social media and our website and get people uh, aware of this issue. And then when tourism comes back and we're able to reopen these days for invasive species removals, then everybody will be like, jump on it and, you know, we'll already have that community built in. Thank you. This question is for Krista. Krista, what was the most impactful moment of the past few days? I think the most impactful moment was, um, I think in the beginning, we kind of were leaning more towards an app, which was like a game mindset. But after creating our customer archetypes, we realized that the community doesn't really have knowledge and that they didn't know that the loss of invasive species was a problem here in Hawaii. Um, so kind of changing um, our plan to more of an educational based um, service was kind of important. For you, um, how did you join this community of entrepreneurs? How did you feel safe enough and vulnerable enough to be able to share a part of yourself and speak your truth to this group of people? I think it was really easy just because we all had kind of like similar interest in this solution. And so um, it was very easy to be transparent and um, sh with sharing why this was important to me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have a, we have a question in actually a comment in from Alan Murabayashi. Lots of discussion right now about rethinking tourism. You should iterate and pitch Hawaii Tourism Board. It's a great point. Um, we have a question from um, Joel Cabasa from Hawaii Business Magazine. Are there single use passes for visitors who may not wanna purchase a recurring membership? Yes, there are. Those would be the tours we offer because we also wanted to get tourists involved in this. There aren't much other organizations that do so, but yeah, tourists probably wouldn't be too attracted to having a long-term commitment when they're just visiting. So that's where we originally got the tour idea. Thank you. Kai, one of our, um, one of our missions is to connect um, your and other founders' passions and interests with their skills, um, what they've honed and what they want to hone. Can you talk about um, kind of the skills that you brought to Nalukai and how you utilize them on your team. I came here, I enjoy learning about things. So on my team, I did a lot of 
the research, like searching up information and getting the data. I also enjoy math. Although I'm not the best at it, it's, I do enjoy it. So I've worked with a lot of the numbers with my team. Thank you so much. Um, we have another question coming in from YouTube. Um, great job is how, is how it starts. How do you plan to build Hawaiian culture capacity within your organization for new members who you plan to hire or help? Um, I think that like, um, I'm actually gonna, if I can pass this question over to Joshua, who is really the one who's bringing the Hawaiian culture into this project. Definitely. Um, I think the Hawaiian culture capacity within our organization will be built through just being able to learn from one another as we grow our, um, our staff and just inviting everyone to come to those removal days and through just those cultural tours, we'll be able to teach people more about our culture. Um, I think investing in uh, just Hawaiian teachers and local farmers to come and talk to our groups. I think that's also a big part for um, the learning process. Yeah, thank you. Josh, tell me about Nalukai. Oh, it's been a total trip. It was, a, it was an adventure and I'm so glad to have been part of it. I feel like I've made so many friends and I've learned so much from everyone, not only from the staff, but just from the other founders. And I'm just so excited to see this young generation of really creative people start solving the problems that are really um, prominent in Hawaii today. I think uh, there is going to be a, an exciting future with just, if it's just these Nalukai founders, it would be an exciting future for sure. And Josh, one final question. How do you carry this forward? How do you carry this startup or idea forward? And how do you carry this learning forward with the community you've just joined? Um, I think by keeping touch in, uh, with this cohort and also just um, educating my family, my friends about it, um, I really actually plan on continuing this project with my team. And I think there's some big things for us. And uh, I'm just excited for what's to come, I guess. Can we give a huge round of snaps for this incredible team? I am so proud of you all. Um, so I'm going to um, pass the digital baton um, back to Executive Director David Clark, where he will do some facilitator and instructor introductions. Thank you both, two teams, for starting us off so strong. Nice job on the, the first two teams. Way to set us off. Way to way to set the bar really high. I know the other teams are now going, oh, <laughs> they were so good. So um, nice job on that. Really, really amazing job. Um, if, if people need to take a little bio break at this point, um, we are going to take about 10 minutes here. Um, uh, not to say it's less important, but I know that the real show here is the students. Um, but I did want to introduce during this break, um, a, uh, our, our staff, or I'm going to ask uh, our, some of our staff members to, uh, to introduce themselves. Um, I'm going to ask you to, uh, to take yourself off of mute and um, say your name, uh, where you are joining us from, and what you do at Nalukai, uh, or what you have done at Nalukai. Um, let's start with, um, with Mr. Austin Stewart. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Austin Stewart. I am the director of curriculum for Nalakai Foundation. I am coming to you from uh, beautiful, uh, sunny Waiakeauka in Hilo, where it's currently raining and I can see about 10 feet. Uh, it, it's my pleasure and privilege um, to create the outline of the uh, things that we study at camp, the methodologies that we take that have been battle tested in Silicon Valley and finding ways to use those to solve problems here at home in Hawaii. Um, and I've been enormously uh, fortunate to be able to work with this group of founders that has absolutely blown away any expectations we could have had for what we could achieve in this online version of camp, the first we've ever done. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Um, May Somali, would you please introduce uh, yourself to um, 
our cohort, or not just our cohort, but to, to the audience, um, your name, where you're from, and what you do at Nalukai. Hi, everybody. So wonderful to see our founders faces and others. Um, my name's May Somali. I'm originally from Sydney, but I have the pleasure of being based here in San Francisco, California, and came across Nalukai a couple of years ago um, due to a, a wonderful uh, gentleman you might know called Aaron Sean. Um, and I haven't looked back since. So I had the pleasure of being at camp in person last year where I was uh, a facilitator of sorts and really um, enjoyed being a facilitator this year as well and constantly inspired by the young founders. I've worked in venture capital before and I tell the founders that the quality of the ventures I see them building is on par if not better and more insightful than the ones that I see here in California. And I'm super excited to see these come to life. Um, and my day job is working um, as a CEO of building ventures in the education sector. It's a pleasure to be here and thanks for having me. Thank you, May. Um, next, could we have uh, Jack Solomon introduce himself? Yes. Hey, um, so my name is Jack Solomon. I currently live on Oahu and uh, I'm working at Purple Maya Foundation, um, mostly helping with marketing and, and participating with the uh, Purple Prize incubator. Um, I'm the social media and marketing manager at Nalakai, as well as the head videographer and storyteller. So my job is to, at the best of my ability, share the story of Nalakai and all of the incredible youth founders with all of you, um, which is a you know, immensely challenging job because of all the complexity and, and just absolute amazingness of all of these people. <laughs> uh, but Nalukai, is, it's always my favorite 10 or 15 days of the year. Uh, I can't really see myself not being a part of this program. Um, it, it's been such a journey. I, it was my fourth or fifth year and um, it just gets better and better. And so I, I'm so grateful to spend the chance or for the chance to spend the time with um, all of the, the facilitators as well as the youth founders. Um, just such an expire, inspiring experience. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Jack. And, and great job. Um, if you haven't seen Jack's uh, videos um, and the, uh, the work he's been doing on social media, check us out um, at the various places where we've been posting. And, um, next, Courtney Gussick. That's me. Hi, I'm Courtney. I currently live on Oahu and this is my third year I've been able to participate um, as a facilitator with Nalukai. I absolutely love this program so much and wholeheartedly believe in it. I haven't been able to participate very much this year, unfortunately, um, because I have two other things going on in my life. One, I'm a test engineer um, on the customer experience team at PepsiCo. I work remotely from home in Nuuanu, and I also founded Pahiki Eco Caskets three years ago. So when I'm not doing this or being a test engineer, I am building eco caskets in Waimanalo. And I'm really excited and proud of all of the founders and the facilitators and David as the executive director. And I love Nalukai. Thank you, Courtney. Now I'm seeing why the question to the last group about what they're going to do with the invasive species they pull out because you use them for your caskets. Yeah, brilliant idea. If you haven't had a chance to check out Pahiki Eco Caskets, um, definitely check them out online. Uh, an amazing organization. That, um, Are you so for you guys? Just give it out. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get a clean up there? Uh, Hold on one sec. <laughs> I think we've got some, uh, there we go. Um, so check out Pahiki Eco Caskets um, online. And um, the work that they're doing is an example that we'd like to set for the students because uh, you take a vision um, you, and, and uh, you add your values to it and you create something out of it is what we hope that they will do. So Courtney, thank you for being with us. Did I, did I plug it enough? Was that good for Pahiki? Was that good? Okay, good. Um, next, uh, Chris Raycamp. Hey everyone, wonderful, wonderful job. I'm so proud and overwhelmed by you all. Um, my name is Chris Raycamp. I'm joining from HPA today with Mr. Shorn, but live on the east side of Hawaii Island. 
and I am a facilitator um, around ideation and new venture creation and um, been doing that for a while and nothing has given me so much hope and so much excitement uh, and enthusiasm for the future as this group, um, both the team at Nalakai and the community of founders that I get to consistently interact with. So, so proud, so excited to be here. Thank you all. Thank you, Chris. Really glad that you're here. Um, Auntie Steph David, could you introduce yourself, please? Tell us where you're from, what you do at Nalakai. Hey, I'm Steph David. I am an instructor and a curriculum designer. Um, I have been a part of Nalakai four out of the five years and um, from operations. And this year, actually, I have to say it, it's been kind of one of my favorites. I am the primary health coach for the founders. Um, this is actually the very first time I have got to absorb the full presentation at its full capacity because typically I'm ordering your guys' food and setting up lunch. And um, it's been really great to, to be a part of Nalukai in a different way. Um, and, and I can honestly say that when Bubs talked to me five years ago and was like, I wanna do a camp, I want to recruit um, students who are interested in entrepreneurship and innovation and creativity. And I want them to have the tools that I had these founders are exactly what I imagined five years ago. And, and so it's been really amazing seeing who's coming in and out and the family just gets bigger and bigger. Thank you, Steph. Um, next, Mara Garcia, could you please uh, introduce yourself, where you're from and what you do at Nolokai? Hello, everyone. My name is Mara. I am actually in Los Angeles, California right now, um, but I'm born and raised on Oahu. And I had the opportunity to join with the pre-planning committee in looking at the social emotional learning curriculum and really trying to plant the seeds of a foundation that allows for the introspection and the interpersonal skills necessary to do this work effectively in the long run. Um, I am an educator in independent schools, school counselor, learning specialist, student service oriented. And these are the skills that I hope to instill in the students I work with on a daily basis. And it's been incredible to see how quickly these students really jumped in and um, really chose to, to engage with one another in an authentic way. And from that place, we're able to come up with such creative ideas and connect with one another in such authentic ways. Um, I hope that this is the future of industry. Um, it's certainly the industries I want to be a part of. So thank you so much for letting me be a part of this today. Thank you, Mara. All right, we will end the, after two more presentations, we'll, you will meet the rest of the staff that we didn't get to in the first part, as well as the team leaders, which are new addition to Nalukai this year. Um, hopefully everybody got a little bit of a, a bio break there. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Shorn to introduce the next two teams. Thanks for uh, being with us, everybody. What a staff, what an incredible group of facilitators and mentors. Um, and they live that idea of being, um, of manifesting their passions and their values into their own work um, and into the collaboration that occurs um, on a daily basis throughout Nalukai. I have the privilege, I have the honor, um, I have the esteem to introduce our next team, Team Huli, Educational Agency for Hawaii Students. Hi, I'm Nainoa. I'm Kea. And I'm Jasmine. And we are Huli. When I look across the classroom and see the faces of today's youth, I see stress. Stress coming from the wrinkles of their forehead showing me pure frustration from figuring out a math equation and still not getting it. Fear in their eyes that they're not going to hold up to the standards of the fixed rubric despite trying their best. Why are there so many negative effects from school when it's supposed to better our future? This needs to change and we need to take action. We here at Huli want to be that change. Huli is a web platform that unites teams of youth with diverse skill sets and backgrounds to solve the problems of their education system. There are three main functions. First, uniting the youth from different backgrounds across the state of Hawaii. Second, encouraging growth and learning throughout the entire process. And third, generating real change that solves the issues in education. When you join our web platform, you'll see this page. 
you will be asked to create a profile. Here, you can select your demographics, interests, and skill sets to personalize your account. We will then group students based on their common interests. When four students agree on one specific micro problem that they want to tackle, a chat space will automatically be created for that group. In these groups, they will receive a curriculum and mentorship to guide them through the process. They will also be posting weekly progress updates on their team page and eventually create a product. Some examples of this could be creating apps, talking to district boards, holding fundraisers, among other options. Through Nalukai, we have learned a real methodology of refining learning motivated products, and we want to do that through our business model. An example of our start would be having one group of students who are witnessing cyberbullying going on in their schools. From there, we'd co-create with them and link them up with people like Aaron Shorn, like Chris Recamp, who have practiced this process for several years, and all of us collectively would help us get this group closer and closer to developing a real solution. Everything so far would have been free as a part of the program. But after that process, we, we, we would have developed a real solution that can be applied to other schools, district boards, to universities, and to other businesses who share that same need to address cyberbullying in their platforms. So we could have these mentors actually help us create connections outwards and sell it to organizations that need it. And our company could take some percentage of the profit. See, every single time we create a solution, we could sell it. And as more and more students come onto the platform, more and more student solutions get created and the business continues to grow and expand. Let's look at the traction and potential of Huli. We went from zero to 100, 250 followers in 24 hours. We have a view to like ratio that is nine times the average in the educational business. It's resting at 36%. And 10% of our followers go on to sign up for our email list ready to create change without even seeing a tangible platform in front of them yet. Let's see how these smaller numbers translate into all of Hawaii. Our total addressable market are going to be all of the high school students of Hawaii. That's around 221,000 students. Our served available market are, going, are going to be high school students of Hawaii who are displeased with their education. Taking our like to view ratio from our learning motivated product, we can estimate that this would be around 80,000 students. Now our target market. These are high school students of Hawaii who want to solve the problems that plague their educational system. Taking our follow to email list ratio, we can estimate that this would be around 20,000 students. This is 20,000 students trying to improve Hawaii's educational system on one platform. So I think I know the big question that you're all asking. Why should I join the Huli team? Well, we know that while this product definitely takes the best of so many worlds, you don't just have to believe in our product, but you have to believe in us. So here we are. I'm Jasmine from Maui and I specialize in graphic design and social marketing. And I think that there should be a place where we can solve problems in our education. I'm Kea, I'm from Big Island. And I specialize in conceptualizing and website design. And like Jasmine, I think that there should be a place where we can solve issues in our education. And I'm Nainoa from Oahu. I specialize in the art of creating narratives and restoring passion and vision. And I think that there should be a place where we can solve issues in education. Everyone here, take a second to think about it. Think about us. We are a company centered around connecting students across the state of Hawaii to create a real difference in the educational system. But the three of us founders, we are from across the state of Hawaii. We have that diverse set of skill sets. We have different backgrounds in so many ways. We are the embodiment of what we want our product to become. A place for connection, a place for growth, and a place for action. We are three students who came together and asked ourselves one question. If students were informed of the issues that plagued their educational system and had access to a platform to create real tangible change, would they feel inspired to do so? If our social media campaign, if our email list, and if our very existence has taught us anything, is that this change is not only possible, but it's happening right before our very eyes. If you want to join the Huli team, there are a couple of ways that you can do so. First, we're looking for a small startup loan of $100,000 in order to really expand our company. We'd first be using this um, $100,000 for $40,000 for software developers to develop a beta web platform to create our product and start these first couple of teams. Second, we use $35,000 for the technical infrastructure necessary to help develop and further the output of these sessions to bring the ideas of these students into real functioning solutions. And finally, 
we'd use $25,000 for marketing in order to make sure that every student across the state of Hawaii who wants to create that change has the ability to be informed of a platform to do so. We also need mentors. If you believe in our mission, if you believe in our purpose and want to help shape the educational system across the state of Hawaii, please partner with us so that you can help guide these students to create change. We want to spark that action for Hawaii. With Huli, I know we can solve the issues I see every day at my school and so, so much more. In our social media campaign, we tell our followers to be the change you want to see in your education. Now, the impetus goes to you. Is this the kind of change that you want to see in our Hawaii? If so, then join our team today. Mahalo for watching. Just a fantastic, fantastic job of communication and showcasing your passion. Uh, the first question goes to Nainoa. Um, how does sense of place and where we are now impact your startup and product and you? I mean, yeah, totally, Aaron. I love that question. I think when I think about our product, I think about Hawaii. And I think of all the history of education that has been rooted in our Hawaiian culture. You know, it was King Kamehameha III, the third, Ka or Kaui Keoli, who once said, Heo puni pala pala ko'u. Mine is a kingdom of knowledge. And from that moment on, he expanded throughout the entire Hawaiian kingdom, getting every teacher into every single town to make sure that they could actually teach every single student the ability to have that literacy, because that's what their Hawaiian kingdom needed. Today, I don't think I, we see that throughout the educational status quo. And we need to really redefine teaching so that way students can get what they need to grow. And I think that's what really comes through in our platform. And that's why we need to be in Hawaii. Thank you, Nainoa. Not just because you liked my question, but also because it was a wonderful response. Um, my next question is for Jasmine. Jasmine, tell me what you brought to this group and what you hope to continue to bring to this startup. So I'm in more of the artistic realm, the graphic design, color palettes, videography, that kind of stuff. And I can, I plan on continuing, of course, to bring that element into this business and also expanding my knowledge on videography and photography and graphic design just to make this company better. Aaron, if you don't mind me expanding a little bit, I think Jasmine's being very humble right now. That in, like majority of that slide deck, our Instagram has been all made by Jasmine. She is <laughs> so talented in so many ways. It's insane. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya, so much of our work has been about exploring our values and exploring our worth as human beings, that we belong in this cohort, that we belong as entrepreneurs. Um, <clears throat> we had um, these incredible facilitators and Sydney Wicking and Mara and David and others um, kind of work with us on that. Can you talk about that experience and how it manifested itself in that presentation and in your startup? Yeah, well, yeah, that's definitely was the biggest part of Nalukai for me was um, it was so much of really finding yourself and finding your values and building that foundation before you um, created something. And, you know, um, building those values and knowing yourself is really what leads you whenever you're creating something. So I think for me, it was really finding how much I care about Hawaii and how much I care about improving Hawaii and having purpose in my community. And doing it with the youth was really the biggest thing for me. It was just like, you know, taking this authority, like, okay, we see the problems in our education system and we have the power to change them. So why aren't we changing them? So um, yeah, that's sort of how the values came into this for me. Why are youth needed to do that? Why can't it be another ed tech firm either in Hawaii or in Silicon Valley? Because we're seeing it. I mean, we're firsthandedly experiencing it and it's not it's that we're seeing them and we we're taking, we're taking, you know, we're taking that mic from them and saying, you know, our voices matter too. And we have the power to change that. And we feel highly underestimated and we know that we can create change. So we're going to do that. Thank you. So we have a great question in um, from uh, another great um, educational entrepreneurial and just social and emotional learning organization called mag hugs on YouTube. 
what problems and opportunities um, uh, do you see that would be the first possible project? What would be your case studies? I think I can go on to that. So if you looked at our business model slide, um, we actually talked about this idea of having cyberbullying as a platform. And I think that that's such a prominent issue. And I think that's a really good start for one case scenario. And honestly, if you're asking us for the solution and how are we gonna solve cyberbullying? I don't know, but that's the point, right? We need to bring in these students who know this problem sphere firsthand. And we need these ingenuitive ideas and these ingenuitive people from different backgrounds who can come together and help us create that solution. And I think through that and other various campaigns, we can really make Huli something special. Um, I'd love to add on to that. And I think there's a lot of unique opportunities coming with, um, you know, this huge shift we're having in education right now with what COVID's presenting to us. You know, we're going to have to find ways to make online, online school enjoyable and engaging. I mean, Nalukai has obviously done a great job at that. So we can take a lot of what we've learned for that. But I think, you know, adjusting to current situations is going to be, it's going to allow us to make some big projects. We have a question in from YouTube from um, Melissa Wilson, um, a, uh, a huge friend of Nalukai. She says, loved the Instagram video, two exclamation points, very on point and inspirational. Um, would you need to raise funding for these student ideas or solutions? I think I can take that. So um, when it comes to that, it actually, actually, um, we it pitched in our investment idea of $100,000 and $35,000 of that specifically would be going towards funding student solutions so we can get these things off the ground, right? That's what our um, initial campaigning is here to do. We're trying to get enough money to be able to make these students' voices and these student platforms really get out into the, um, into the broader Hawaii community. And that's what that initial investment would do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break protocol with Mara. Um, Mara, can you um, kind of speak to your comment about wanting to be a mentor at Huli? Um, and um, if you have any questions or additional comments, please jump in. Yeah. Uh, well, so um, yeah, part of my work in schools is to uh, educate a, a cohort of mentors who can find ways to get credit for the passion that they have because I've seen this in the students I've worked in so much of what I'm seeing on your faces and hearing in your voices of this interest to pursue a personal passion and interest and yet the schedule containing you in a way that doesn't allow for it. Uh, so the idea of students kind of claiming that time and that energy to produce something is really, really exciting to me um, and, and is, is already the work that I try to do and bring to schools. Um, and so it's just, it was just awesome to see. A uh, little still choked up over here. Um, a question that I had kind of to that point is, um, you know, students' schedules are so tight and the stress levels are, is so high to meet the demands. I'm curious if you thought through any ideas of how you might um, reconnect students to their schools to see if there's ways they could get credit or transcript um, some of the work that they do or time that they put into this. I think we want to start off by focusing on a mainly get building this platform and allowing it to, to develop the student solutions. And I think as students are able to notice these ideas of how much change we're going to be able to create in our communities, I think that's when the, the, the schools are really going to have the impetus on them to put this into classrooms. You know, they're going to be so excited about being able to create apps that solve for cyberbullying or testify in front of the Hawaii State Legislature to remove drugs in schools, right? There are so many great solutions that we can create through this app. And all of those great solutions will be want to be emulated, represented by the various schools communities. And I think from there, curriculum would be easy to add into the school community. Definitely. I think Nanoa said that really well. And I think another thing I'd like to add is that these solutions are going to have value to the schools, um, obviously, because a lot of them are working to improve the actual schools. So I think Nanoa said it really well. There's a way to reintegrate this into the actual curriculum eventually. Thank you. Um, so much, of, there's a couple of questions that are about kind of this topic. Um, I think what's made your, your team sing is the different skills that you bring, um, but you've, you've kind of all centered around one problem space or solution or thing you're passionate about. Um, how does that manifest in the teams that you create um, on your web platform? How does diversity, equity, inclusion, how do those, those pieces manifest themselves 
in the digital space? And why is that important to solve problems? Yeah, I mean, I think as you saw in our pitch, we're sort of like the embodiment of what we're wanting to create here. I mean, you know, Jasmine coming in with those killer graphic design skills from Maui and I know with his amazing storytelling skills and, you know, we all bring different skills to the table, but we're all able to come together on one issue. And that's what we really want to create with these teams is, you know, they're able to come together. They all have different backgrounds and perspectives that they bring to the table. And that all makes it better. I mean, within our group, you know, we learn how to compromise. We learn, <laughs> we learn how to, you know, be able to validate each other's opinions, but still express our own values. And all of that's going to go into these teams that we're building. And I think Nalukai has really allowed us to, we've, we've gone through the process and now we're able to create that with other students throughout Hawaii. Thank you. We have another question um, from Kei on YouTube Live. The question is for Nainoa. Nainoa, how could you use your platform to help support disadvantaged local youth facing real problems of domestic abuse, drugs, suicide, et cetera? Well, I mean, that's a great question because I think that it's so needed in our communities. When I look throughout the state of Hawaii, I so, see so many Hawaiians who deserve the ability to have that sense of agency and control over themselves. And I think that that's what this app looks to do, right? By creating initial problem spaces as we went through in the user experience, we'd allow for certain aspects to maybe fo focus on that domestic abuse or focus on the various issues that Hawaiian kids specifically can face. And we bring collections of students who are interested in that same passion and try to create real solutions, right? That is the definition of our motto. So thank you for that question because it's exactly what we want to do. We want to bring together students from different backgrounds, different skill sets, bring them in to solve these issues like the ones that you are mentioning. And that's how we're going to create real change for the students who make it possible. Thank you so much. Um, so, so much of the storytelling that we taught um, was also centered around um, UX and UI and graphic design. And Jasmine, I think you embodied that so well from the colors you chose to the media you created. Can you talk about that with us? Like about how we decided on the final like graphic. Okay. Yeah, I mean, how, how did you bring your skills to the table to kind of choose those things? So I already knew like a background of like color psychology and like what things really have the greatest impact, I guess you could say. So I brought that to the table and with Nainoa and Kea's knowledge and opinions on, well, their different backgrounds we finally ended up with the product that really hit home and really made a great impact on our end goal, if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes total sense. I, I wanna um, give a huge series of snaps for Team Huli. Um, uh, I think that personally, this has been my vision and mission for the five years of my life where I figured out that I wanna be in education and wanna be an entrepreneur. And I can't thank you enough for showing me that it needs to be youth that lead this way and that all of our work um, uh, is so important in Hawaii and around the world. A huge mahalo. Thank you. Um, so for our thank next group. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Um, our next group is Team Cruise Transportation Solutions. Hello, I am Joe, and these are my co-founders, Natalie, Cole, and Pakilla, and welcome to Cruise. As an incoming college freshman, it became time to go and pick out my dorm room. When I finally got to my appointment, my college told me that there was simply no more room for me to house on campus, and now I must commute four miles to get to school. I immediately started to think, Will I get that same college experience? Will I maintain my social life? And will I find reliable rides to and from campus? I've already had so many bad interactions with the public transit system, whether it was lack of human connectivity or just slow and inconvenient travel times. I've been down, let down so many times and that's why this problem is close to my heart. And I know I'm not the only one so why are we qualified? 
Our team is made of four founders who share a passion for better transportation. We are already experiencing the same struggles as many college students in the USA when it comes to transportation. We also all believe that meeting and getting to know people in your area is a life-changing experience. So let me expand on that a little bit. Joe is an incoming freshman in college, Natalie is a frequent bus rider, and Cole is always carpooling to school. My bus stop is too far to walk to my house, but I'm also afraid of public transportation because you never really know who you're going to meet or what you're getting into. Our solution is Cruise. The Cruise app will help others to meet like-minded carpoolers in their area. The message feature also allows people to pre-plan their store trips, rides to school, or other transportation needs with each other in a safe manner. It is the cruiser's decision if they'd like to cruise with people in their public list, contacts, or friends of friends. My name is Koa, and I am a freshman at UH Manoa. Today, I face a challenge of deciding between Domino's and Pizza Hut. I chose Pizza Hut because of the Pizza Hut ad that I saw on the cruise app. It offered a 10% discount off of my order. And if I brought another cruiser, we would receive a 15% discount off of our bills. However, I don't have a ride. So what I did was I opened up the cruise app and went to the map feature to find other cruisers. By tapping on those dots, I could view their bios and private message them. After asking around for a while, I found someone to give me a ride. There's a feature in the app that tells me how much money it's gonna cost how much gas money it's going to cost to get there. So I paid half of that. After deciding where, when and where to meet, we finally got together and then he drove me to Pizza Hut. I ended up eating with him and we scored on the discount. Cruz gave me a friend, a ride, and a discounted pizza. Did you know that in the U.S., 11 million people do not have access to a car? <laughs> Did you have any idea that cars are the second largest household expense? In the last decade, there's been a 29% rise in car prices. If we were to carpool twice a week, we could reduce carbon emissions by 1,600 pounds. That means that we could reduce your carbon emissions by an entire eighth. 30% of college kids already carpool, but we want to increase that number and make it easier for these kids to find a ride. Cruise lowers our carbon footprint by putting multiple people in a single car. We also solve the issue of safety by letting the cruisers decide who they're going to carpool with, as well as um, getting to know them before, during, and after their ride. We even help with the last mile problem. For example, some people ride buses that do not connect to their final destination. That's where Cruise would come in. Lastly, we support local businesses by forming partnerships with them where they give our cruisers discounts and in turn, this increases traffic to their companies. For our carpooling competition, Waze makes up most of it. Uh, they have 150 million users on their platform. Others only represented by 1%. And some other platforms include Zimride, Karma Carpool, Scoop, and Kids Carpool. But what makes this different? As you can see from this table, our app boasts a myriad of positive attributes. We are affordable for one thing. We offer varied distances depending on how far the drivers are willing to go. We also place a huge emphasis on establishing community connections and we are flexible. Um, if you wanted to schedule events a week in advance, you could do that. For example, a festival, or if you wanted just to grab dinner with some friends, you could also do that. We also offer partnership placement. So for our business model, we plan to make revenue off of advertisements. We plan to charge companies $1,000 for a month long campaign when we begin. And we will also be establishing partnerships with local businesses. Um, by having businesses on our platform, we plan to advertise for them in real time. Giving users these discounts will increase traffic to these companies. Our company is already gaining traction. On our Instagram, looking into the insights, the primary group that are viewing our page are 18 to 24 year olds. This shows that our marketing and our problem are relevant to them. This is the exact college demographic that we're aiming for. Out of every 30 viewers on our Instagram page, one of them clicks on the link in our bio, which sends them to our website. That's about 50% higher than the average amount of clicks onto the link for most other companies. And we already have people signing up to receive emails for updates on the app. 
People are very interested in our company and our purpose. That's why you would be wise to invest in us. What we're looking for is a $100,000 investment. This would help get us off the ground and develop our app as well as test it. Within a year, our app will be released and we're gonna be testing it near UH Manoa. We hope that you join the cruise community. Let's cruise cruise. Woo, Team Cruise. That was fire slides. A fantastic presentation. First question is for Cole. Cole, what was it like working with this group? They were a fun group. I mean, everyone got their work done. Uh, we had a good vibe going all the time, playing music. We had some dancing. Uh, <laughs> but I think everyone brought a whole a large set of skills to the team. Everyone had so many different things that they were good at. So we really could just fill any position with anyone. And we were really flexible with that. Uh, our next question comes in from Alan Murabayashi. Alan, I'm gonna ask to break protocol and for you to ask it directly. I love to break protocol. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> You're welcome, Alan. <laughs> So the, the, this is directed at the cruise team, but I think it can be addressed to all the teams and it's awesome. one of scope because a lot of you have technological solutions for the problem that you've identified. So is there a way to do a paper app version that doesn't require $100,000 to prove your point before you move on to the next step? Thank you. Um, I think I'll take this question. There definitely is a way that we can create some sort of paper app and have just test drivers go around UH Manoa just to see if people are willing to go into a carpool. Natalie, this next question is for you. What skills did you bring to your team and how did they manifest in this presentation and onward? Um, a lot of my skill set is varied. I do a lot of art, but this whole team was very talented in art. So I, I feel like I took on the role of project manager and sort of delegating a lot of the work that went on. And I also, I also made myself available wherever I was needed. Thank you. So this question comes in um, from uh, Gabby Navalta. Let me find it in my chat. Um, Gabby is a uh, Nalukai alumni and incredible storyteller and videographer. The question is for the safety of cruisers, how is one's identity verified or is there a background check? Uh, so for safety protocols, we require all of our passengers and drivers to be at least 18. And for drivers, we require them to have background checks or for drivers and passengers, we require them to have background checks but for drivers, we also will require them to have a picture of their license as well as their um, DMV license, I believe. Yeah. Thank you. Joe, this question is for you. Um, it was obvious that you connected um, what you're passionate about and who you are as a person to this group. Can you talk about how you were able to do that in such a short amount of time at Nalukai and what that looked like? Uh, uh, all right. Um, so this entire process in Nalukai, it's really been like a self-discovery journey. Um, coming into Nalukai, I like, I, I faced some sort of identity crisis where I wanted to be somebody I wasn't and just wanted to reinvent myself. And then going in maybe a week or even earlier, I started realizing that, you know, I have something to bring to the table as myself and one of those many things are the passion I have for school, education, art, and, you know, I, I just have so many interests and I just love to bring that to the table. Thank you, Joe. Um, our next question is about transparency. Um, how do you as an organization um, tell your consumers that you're not just collecting their data and passing it off, like so many rideshare apps or others before it? I think that the best thing that we could do 
is tell them exactly who can see what data and what the data we need from them, as well as um, kind of like just ask them what they're willing to give us in the first place. Thank you. Pakela, can you talk about this experience um, of joining this community and cohort and um, what's next for you afterwards? Um, this was a really fun experience and I got to meet a lot of new people, um, a lot of like-minded people as well, which is really important and I've never really got to do that before. Um, after this, I'm probably going to open a Shopify store, which I've been working on for a while, as well as see how the cruise thing goes. So yeah, thank you. Of course. What was your favorite memory from the past couple of days? Um, my favorite memory was probably in our groups. Um, we've just been playing little games and we've been listening to a lot of music, but me and Cole have been playing like a lot of little side games just to pass the time sometimes. So that's really fun for us. Setting that culture, having fun with your team. Great. Um, we have another question coming in. Um, is the scope of drivers limited to students or is it for anyone who signs up? I think that at the moment it's for anyone who signs up, but we'd really like to target it to specific colleges. For example, how we said that we'd like to base it around UH Manoa. We really think that this would be a great way for college students, like Joe said earlier, to get around and get to just know other people in their college so they don't feel so lonely. Thank you. One of the threads that um, came throughout Nalukai was leadership and redefining what leadership looks like. And we had Sydney Wicking come in and talk about those five dimensions of leadership. Natalie, can you speak to that and how you kind of um, took those into your work here and how you'll kind of carry them forward afterwards? Um, I definitely learned that leadership isn't easy, but also that there are multiple ways to become a leader. You can be a leader from behind, or you could be a co-leader or a leader within. And I think they're all equally as important because you can't, function without the other. Um, and just being in this process, I sort of learned that it's not a competition. I'm still learning to take that in, but it's not a competition. And what's really important is how we refine each other and how we all grow as a group. Thank you. Um, Alan Murabayashi um, gives us all kind of a, a thought experiment in the chat. A good thought experiment for all teams is to spend time figuring out why your project will fail. It forces you to play skeptic and divorce yourself from the emotions tied to your ideas. It's really good advice as we carry these things forward. Um, any, last, any last things that your team wants to add about Cruise, about your experience? Just dive in. Well, uh, I think it's just being, it's been amazing seeing how our, uh, our company idea has just really evolved. It began as we didn't have transportation when we jumped off the bus, but it grew to something so much more social and we modeled it after some social apps as well. And I think it could really help with some of the issues that many college students face today. Thank you, Cole. So we're actually going to take a, um, a full-on five-minute break um, before um, at 2.50 we have our team leader introductions. Um, for all the founders, for everyone else, stand up, shake your arms, um, do whatever business you have to attend to. Um, but we're going to start at 2.50 on the dot. Can we give a huge round of snaps for the cruisers of Team Cruise? Thank you so much. So we will reconvene at 2.50.
And we are back. If we could stop that screen share. Oh, just perfect crystal clean timing. Thank you so much. David, are you there? I am here. I wanted to introduce two of our other facilitators who are with us today um, that uh, we ran out of time um, before the next presentation. So if um, uh, I would like, I would like Nick Wong to please introduce himself. Nick, are you, are you with us? I am. Thanks, Mr. Clark. Aloha. My name is Nick Wong. I'm calling in from Nuuanu, Oahu. Um, for the past, I've been with Nalukai since the first camp back in 2016 when I was a sophomore in high school. Um, kind of came back every year helping to mentor, helping to um, kind of do some organizational logistics work. I eventually worked on some uh, technical things for helping teams launch lightweight, minimum viable products. Um, and this year, my capacity was I was uh, the Slack master, so helping to create that online community for our camp. Um, that was kind of my role. Um, when I'm not doing Nalukai, I am an intern. I'm working with uh, Powbox. I am a software engineer and UI UX designer. And I'm currently studying computer science and entrepreneurship at University of California, Berkeley. And super excited to be here helping out, out Nalukai and the, the founders are killing it today. They're excited for the future of Hawaii and the future of Nalukai. Thank you, Nick. Nick has also been instrumental over the years um, in helping us develop the pre-work session of, uh, that happens before camp uh, in a typical year. Um, that, that has been done virtually uh, for the last three years. And it actually is the thing that allowed us to think that we might be able to change this experience that we've done live every year into a virtual experience in part, largely because of Nick's good work and the designing that he did there. Um, so thank you, Nick. Um, Kahinu Payne, would you please tell us your name and where you're from and what you do at Nalukai? Some of the many things you do at Nalukai. Hello, my name is Kahinu Payne. <clears throat> Kahinu Payne from Waimea, Hawaii Island. What do I do at Nalukai? I don't even know because it's undefined. So I basically get to work amongst all these bright, educated, funny human beings. And I get to just fill in the blanks and kind of go along for the ride and support where needed. And um, yeah, help keep the fire going. And yet at the same time, make sure it doesn't get out of control. So uh, that is me. I'm very fortunate to be here and to have been part of this. And thank you all for being here. Thank you, Kahino. As was just listed in the chat, uh, Kahinu is the glue, says Jack Solomon. And uh, a lot of us are nodding affirmatively with that. Um, so um, this year, one of the things that we decided to do when we moved Nalukai from being uh, a live program where we bring together students um, from all over the state to uh, connecting um, over the computer and via screens, um, one of the th one solution that we thought would help us convey the culture that we try to promote here um, was to bring back alumni team leaders. So for the first time, we had um, we had eight people who are part of previous year's cohorts um, who very generously um, have have spent their time with us, and two of them happen to be um, on the continent: one in Florida and one in Texas. Um, and as, uh, as Alan knows quite well dur during his time with us, we can go late uh, into the evening sometimes. And um, so, uh, so two of our, our team leaders, our alumni team leaders, uh, had some very late nights on a, on a few occasions. Um, but I, I would like the team leaders to introduce themselves um, to our, our audience today. Um, if you could please... Um, take yourself off mute when it is time um, and say your name, where you are from, um, what year you did um, Malukai. Let's start with James. Oh, oh, my partner in crime. <laughs> we, can, we can go together. Hi, I'm Tyson. I'm from Milani and myself and James both attended Nalukai in the 2019 Oahu cohort. 
Yeah, yeah basically what uh, Tyson just said, but my name is James Pratt. I went to last year's Oahu cohort on Oahu, and uh, I'm from Lihui Kauai. Awesome. And uh, from what we understand, those two might be roommates together in college next year as freshmen, which is uh, great fun to imagine, actually. Um, Elena. Uh, hi, my name is Elena. Um, I'm from Manoa, Oahu, and um, I was in the last year's Big Island cohort. Thank you, Elena. Uh, Avery. All right. Um, hi, my name is Avery. I'm coming to you guys from Florida right now, I'm making sure to stay inside. And I was a part of the 2017 uh, Nalukai cohort, so a few years ago. Awesome. Thank you, Avery. Glad you're staying inside. Um, can we hear, please, from, let's see, from Naya. Hi, my name is Naya. Um, I'm from Oahu, living in Honolulu. And I was part of the 2019 Big Island cohort. Thank you much, Naya. Ivory. Uh, hi, my name is Ivory. Um, I'm from Oahu, and I was in last year's Big Island cohort. And Fallon. Hi, I'm Fallon. I'm from Honoka'a on the Big Island, and I was attending the 2019 Big Island cohort. Okay, let's see. Did I forget anybody? Uh, oh, yeah, Amir. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Amir. Uh, I'm from Nuuanu, Oahu, and I did Nalukai in 2017 summer, and I'm glad to not be forgotten tonight. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, in the first couple of days of camp, as we would, as we would ask team leaders to speak, we would we would forget a mirror. <laughs> and so it's become kind of, kind of a joke for us. Um, how, did I forget any of the team leaders in, in actuality? Okay, good. <laughs> so um, I really wanna salute the team leaders because um, this is the first year that, they, the, that we've ever had this role. It was largely undefined, or now I should say, it has been defined by you. You took the experiences that you had um, when you were a uh, founder, when you were a student, um, at Nalukai. And you managed quite gracefully um, to draw on that experience without allowing it to overshadow the experience of this year's founders. And that is a tremendously difficult task. Um, and I don't know, founders, if, if, if you noticed just how hard they were trying to keep that balance, because I'm sure there were moments where they wanted to jump in, given the experience they'd had, given the fact that they have done presentations like the ones you're doing now, but they wanted you to have the experience and it was quite a selfless act on their part. And so I am indebted, I think literally Nalukai this year is indebted to the work of the team leaders. Because when we get to meet in person, we, many of us are educators. Um, we've been trained, we've, we've developed skills over the years to be able to assess whether or not a student understands something. Um, we can check in with them if we think that they don't get something. Um, we can rephrase it another way. And we didn't have as many of those sensors or those opportunities to be able to read the group. And you all provided that. You all provided the eyes and ears, as well as fostering a, a tremendously um, enriching growth experience, I would say, for each of the founders. And you stayed up late and you were there at all times. And anything we threw your way, um, we asked you to do. So, um, and you did it just beautifully and with grace. And so um, founders, I, 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 I would ask that you help me in giving a round of applause to the team leaders who did such a remarkable job this year. Thank you very much. Um, and Mr. Shorn, could you please uh, take it away to introduce the last, um, our final two teams? I will. I'm actually gonna intro myself first um, and then I'll intro the teams. Um, it's amazing to see these team leaders. Um, my role at Nalukai is being the program director for our programs. Um, and um, I wear many hats, um, but like May mentioned, I'm, I kind of try to bring as many people to this collective of incredible entrepreneurs as possible by finding mentors, um, by partnering with David and others to bring this incredible contingent of youth and adults together. 
Um, and it's an absolute privilege to be doing this for the past five years, um, to watch this program grow and evolve, to watch um, Bubs's vision um, manifest forth across the islands of Hawaii. And I am so grateful and blessed to be here. Um, and I'm grateful and blessed to intro our next team, the team of Team Virtuous, Educational Enrichment for Hawaii Students. Enjoy. We are Virtuous. Virtuous is a curated excursion program for students who grow in various community-based areas around Hawaii, whether it's through community service or personal connections. Similar to how a trust bridge provides structural support and connects destinations, Virtuous strives to create structure for a community, for support and opportunity, along with achievement and exploration. We connect students to values and virtue. I'm Katrina, the co-founder and software developer of Virtuous. I'm Faith, also the co-founder and the digital storyteller. I am Jordan, I'm also a co-founder and the program developer. Virtuous is a curated excursion program where students from difficult beginnings or circumstances can find meaning in a community projects and value-based learning. We as a team are determined to give students a journey of discovery through strengthening connections between peers and adults while teaching lessons about values for students to gain a sense of belonging. At Virtuous, we believe that all individuals have the true potential to succeed and find their substance along a journey of life. The problem is being ignored in our education system. When I was in elementary school, I had a peer I remember quite particularly. From what I knew, he didn't have the best home environment. And, he, and this resulted in him misbehaving quite often. To be frank, he was a bully and ultimately got suspended. But at times he was laid back and genuinely smart. But the last time I heard about him was in eighth grade. He was in a youth detention center. Him and similar instances identified a problem within the educational space of those with less. There's a disconnection between a student's and life values rooted from a lack of emotional support in education. Suspension actually affects more than just a single student. Our society stigmatizes these students, so oftentimes they're left to face the consequences alone without any guidance. Schools aren't doing very much to help out either. With 40,000 hours lost learning opportunities through suspensions, studies have shown that students who get suspended have a far higher chance of becoming criminals. If we allow ourselves to hear the ignored, change could be created exponentially. Studies have proven that the majority of individuals with difficult beginnings are missing three important aspects in their lives. The presence of an inspiration, no parent figure, inclusion into a proper peer group, and engagement in activities that allow for self-discovery. And through this program, we will try to replicate these three aspects. Our user experience is called the Virtuous Hero's Journey. Before Virtuous, the student is either under disciplinary action or prone to school punishment, which allows them to be enrolled into Virtuous. Virtuous gives them a sense of place by taking them to community service and give back. Then we teach them values and connection within the community with through engaging activities. Lastly, they give a reflection of the day and gather for their own storytelling. After Virtuous, we hope they take lessons into their personal lives and community and motivate for improving their life. In order to map our competitive landscape, we utilized a grid analysis to compare Virtuous to four other existing resources to have the similar vision of supporting students. Taking account of the factors of emotional support, affordability, learning by doing, and having a physical program, Virtuous is the only one that encapsulates all of these aspects. Market prediction. Based on our research of the data extracted from NPR nonprofit organization, we predict that we will be able to reach 813 students 
who are under school disciplinary action in Hawaii, also known as 17% of the pie chart within just the first year. Our serviceable available market will be the students who have difficult beginnings or circumstances, but have the potential to thrive. This includes about 1,099 students, which is about 23% of our pie chart. Our total available market is for all students, about 60% of the total pie chart. In the beginning, we would generate our business revenue from the community donations. We create customer values. This includes how we are able to satisfy existing needs of emotional support. The marketing we will use, it will include social media, which will generate views and public exposure. As we gain traction, we will transition to gaining revenue for the free program with a paid camp for students and adults. For traction development, we have started an Instagram account to spread awareness and not yet profitable, from the, but from this large traction, we can garner email signups, a large amount of website visits, and commitment to our journey. Our estimated impact over time for the number of students enrolled is expected to increase over the next four years. The orange line signifies how many students out of those enrolled are able to help get their lives back on track by being active members of Virtus. We as students care. We are high school students firsthand and understand the expectations and pressure that are put upon us. And some students fall under the pressure so much that they squander their potential. We come together for the need to support our peers, our Lahui, our education. Our goal is to raise $250,000 we need program development, seasonal and full-time staff, including instructional leaders, transportation, and operational development. The long-term goal of Virtus is to develop programming, which could be sold through team development camps and support the at-youth risk programs we are proposing. You can connect with us at our email at virtus at gmail.com and our Twitter and Instagram accounts. Thank you. Thank you. Great, 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 great job. Thank you so much. This was definitely a space that you felt passionate about. Gordon, I loved the story that you told. Um, tell me more about how your own life experience led to um, this solution. Well, uh we all kind of contributed like different ideas and values to this project. Uh, and the, like my, my vision was like to create a sort of community uh, similar to Nabukai that provides uh, students with uh, support in various aspects. And like that coming from an immigrant family background that really, I didn't really have the sort of uh, community mm. that Nandukai provides. And uh, faith came in with uh, wanting to help out those less fortunate, uh, those who have uh, behavioral issues and uh, yeah, and Katrina kind of came in and tried and uh, wanted to help out those with uh, less finance with uh, uh, less financial background. To and add on, so, yeah. Oh yeah to add on to what um, Gordon said earlier, all three of us came together with the vision of wanting to help our education. Um, we see that we want to. There's like a larger disparity gap between our educational process. And we wanna make sure that everyone has the, um, reaches their true potential to succeed. So we hope that we can provide the resources to help them um, reach their true potential. Thank you both. Uh, we have a great question from Kay Lau on YouTube. 
Um, inspiring values and well-crafted presentation. Absolutely. Team Virtuous, could you share how you developed the logo? Okay. Yes, I can answer that. So I developed the logo based on the name and then and they kind of tied into each other. So trust came from the word trust bridge and trust out of trust bridge is a foundation to hold up a bridge, to hold up connecting two sides. So that's why the two sides of the logo look like um, the foundations of a trust bridge. And in the middle is a heart that includes um, love and empathy and the leaf that represents growth. So if the bridge is able to include those two things together, that is what our mission is to do. Well, that was an unbelievably beautiful answer. Thank you. Um, Faith, can you speak to the graphic design? Um, the, the aesthetics in the presentation were phenomenal. And the how you told a story through graphic design was really powerful too. Yeah, so with Virtress, our main target audience is more of suspended students and students who aren't um, very lively about their education. So we wanted to make the logo and the color seem appealing and seem friendly and not dark and gloomy and any such. We wanna seem safe and we wanna seem simple and clean so that we can attract any audience and hopefully those that look to a brighter future. And that is the aesthetic that we want to present. We have a question from our very own Jack Solomon. How do you plan to recruit and train facilitators? Great question, Jack. I guess we could reach out to uh counselors or teachers who aren't working at the moment um, and try to get them on board on the, to this program. To add on to that, um, we really value our community. So we're going to reach out to our community members and find any volunteers who are credible and um, have a, the same vision for similar to our um, virtue statement about helping the students through any um, pathways. Our next question comes in from Alan. How do you see your program working with or independently of the Department of Education? Uh, it will work sort of uh, in tangent <laughs> with uh, the, the Department of Education. So like, let's say I got suspended then I would, uh, the Department of Education would refer me to Virtuous and I could uh, have the option of taking the Virtuous program instead of receiving disciplinary action. And uh, by going through this program, I can sort of better myself. I can see the values of learning and change my behavior uh, and come back to school as a better member of, uh, as a better student. Thank you. Um, this question is for anyone. Um, how did you find yourself in this program? How did you grow in this program? I felt like I personally grew to become a person who looked more into their values. It was very hard at the very beginning in my life to know what I mean to people and know um, what my purpose is, what my legacy will be. And just look as going to Nalukai, it shows that each individual has something so much to offer and we've been able to bring that out in everything we do. So thank you Nalukai for doing that. <laughs> yeah, to add on, I truly love um, how, what Nalukai does. It's truly inspiring to see how um, the youth today can help solve the problems of the community. And it's a, it's truly been an amazing experience where we get to work and connect with other individuals. Yeah, uh, there's so many members in this cohort that I just look at, I just look at and say, wow, this, per this person is so much better in so many ways in this aspect. And it really, you know, drives me forward. It really encourages me to uh, improve my own self. Like uh, I look at Nainoa and his public speaking skills and I'm just like, wow, I want that. 
And Gordon, just so you know, there are so many moments and ways that um, you make me and others in this program want to grow in capacities too. So know that you've inspired us in a myriad of ways too. Faith, um, this question is for you. Um, can you talk about um, how you have honed your skills, um, not only technical, but also kind of social and emotional, and how you're going to carry that on post Nalukai? Thanks, Erin. So yes, I do have a different set of social and emotional skills. Um, I bring a lot of, I do a lot of graphic design and digital storytelling. I was planning to do a video, but I realized we had to be more invested in the product first and the vision first. So that's why we were able to develop the slides and such. But I think for social, I personally am an empath. So I want to make sure that the people around me are feeling safe and feeling secure. And I know that there are so many other students, especially in the educational community that don't have people that look out for them. And I think that um, even if I can't give, you know, certain people second chances, I could do it through a program. So that is why, that is what I like to bring to Virtus. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm gonna break protocol um, uh, for David Clark. So um, this team's story in a lot of ways illuminates the, the process that we went through this year. And it differed from the, the way that we have allowed um, or encouraged teams to form. Um, and I, I wanted to just highlight that for just a moment. For the, for the first time this year, um, what we did was we relied on an application question that we had. And we read everybody's answer uh, to a question, what's a problem you see, what are you facing in the next 10 years? And we grouped those, and Mara was very helpful with this. Um, we grouped all of them. And then we offered that list of questions to the students um, by, by providing uh, a research opportunity. So we took eight of the, the most popular answers and we asked the group to spend a full day researching those eight topics and they became experts um, in asking questions, answering questions, uh, putting presentations together on all of those topics. It was a long day and they delved into those topics that had been in essence crowdsourced from them. Um, and that was the basis on which we built teaming this year. Um, so that groups coalesced around problems that they wanted to solve. And they were getting ready to vote um, and select which ones they wanted to be a part of. And we realized um, that though they may have been crowdsourced, there may have been a few that were left out that some students really felt passionate about. And Faith was the first student who came to us and said, can I present something? Education was not one of the ones that made it to the top eight. Um, but I feel like I really, I, I feel very strongly about this. And she spoke of um, suspensions. Uh, in particular, and how so much time was lost. And what, was, what would end up happening is students would basically be, be sent home to do nothing. Um, and she thought there is an opportunity. And it allowed us to, um, to really think about how we could capture those other issues. And so we gave founders the chance to pitch their peers, um, to put together, to add things to the ballot, essentially, that they could choose to coalesce around. Um, and we had three students who, who did so, um, Faith, um, Nainoa, um, and also Natalie. So the traffic problem and the two education groups were specifically um, student designed and not crowdsourced, but they managed to convince their peers through their pitches that they should go jump on those teams and work with them. And so um, I wanted to salute them and um, say thank you. And uh, we've gotten to see all three of your presentations now. And I'm so glad that you stood up and said, no, we want to solve this problem and, and got others to do the same. So um, for your initiative, I applaud you. What was it like, Faith, to see an idea um, be picked up on and then executed by a team of people and releasing perhaps some of that control um, over what it might look like from when it was envisioned in your head? Uh, I am so honored, David, because honestly, at the very beginning, I didn't think that um, my pitch was going to be picked up at all. Like it was, it felt like such a small issue at the time. And restorative justice was a big um, thing for me. I've tried to implement it in my school, but they didn't have space. And I've just, I really wanted to look out for the people that, that um, aren't known to be look out for. And seeing this kind of grow and being executed into something bigger, I really, really hope 
I can help that with people for the for anyone who wants to join and help with Fortress. But yeah, it's it's been a really magical experience, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, David, and thank you, Faith. Um, it's a really beautiful answer, and I think the agility and um, and pivots you showed in your group um, have inspired us as an organization to try to live that too. Um, that leads us to our um, incredible team, Kaya Puni Capsules, subscription box for climate change impact. Um, Austin, take it away. Hello, we are the founders of Kaya Puni Capsules. Yes, climate change is a big issue, but through extensive research, we found that the real problem is that people think their individual actions don't make a difference. So our goal is to educate and empower people to make a measurable impact on the environment. Here in Hawaii, our beautiful coral reefs are suffering from the ocean's rising acidity and temperature. We cannot let our coral reefs die as they are home to many aquatic species and protect our shores from floods, waves, and storms. Remember, your actions matter. Reducing your carbon footprint will help save our coral reefs. Kaipuni Capsules is a monthly subscription box with eco-friendly products and materials to enable individuals to track and reduce their carbon footprint. We are utilizing this monthly subscription model to educate people on their impact and introduce them to more eco-friendly practices and habits. We offer three boxes. The bio box and the vibe vessel function as our niche boxes, with the bio box specialing in all things land and the vibe vessel all things ocean. The planet pack is the standard and combines uh, features of the previous two while adding other unique products, making it the most general of the three. Here's an example of what the first month of a product might look like. There are products recycled from beach uh, plastics gathered from organized beach cleanups. The cool thing about these products is that they come with a QR code that directs the owner to a catalog of images showing them where that plastic came from, giving the owner a tangible understanding of how that product made a real impact. Included is also locally produced reef safe sunscreen. And with the Vive Vessel, you get an invitation for a monthly beach cleanup where you can join fellow eco-conscious change makers. The Kaipuni Tracker is a standard across all three boxes. The calendar-like organizational booklet helps the owner to keep track of their energy usage in and outside of the home. Although anyone can buy our products, our realistic target market is Hawaii residents between the ages of 15 and 50. Since our research, research has shown that they are the demographic that tends to care most about climate change. 686,300 people meet that criteria. We believe that roughly 8% of them, or 54,904 people, will have the means and desire to buy our eco-friendly products. Our boxes range from $24.99 to $34.99 paid every two months, or around $150 to $210 a year, which when multiplied by the 54,904 people who we expect to buy our products totals an annual gross revenue of between $8,235,600 and $11,529,840. Our business plan is subscription. We have one box for every two months and certain aspects of the box change month to month. This gives the customer time to accomplish their milestone while also anticipating the next box to arrive. You sign up for a one-year plan and you get a box every two months. Our company has researched the scope of the market and found that the company companies were very spread apart. There were lots of companies that were either very expensive and had a lot of products or they were very affordable but only had one or two products. Our company has the best of both worlds, a variety of products and a price that is affordable. Actually our price was below average of what all of these companies had in mind. Our website functions as our online retail space. The main page provides informa information about our business, our product, and our vision. From the main page, the user navigates to explore different capsule options. You can select which product you are interested in, and you are encouraged to explore which option would be best for you. Our description of the contents and price is listed where you can purchase. All right, we have a sale, but it's not actually finished there. We want to promote action. Our customers will be encouraged and incentivized to share their impact share images and stories of how they are actively making a positive change within their communities and Hawaii in general. Included in each box are examples of how you can take photos with our product in action 
and post them the hashtag capsules for climate. One lucky winner every other month will get the next box free. This incentivizes our customers to, to get others in the community to join in, to make a movement that can scale, stimulating action-based change in the attempt to heal our earth. So you might be wondering why our team? Climate change impacts all of us, and as young members of our communities, we're all going to have to cope with the consequences of climate change all throughout our adult lives. Our team, however, is uniquely equipped to help deal with this issue because of the diverse sets of backgrounds and experiences we carry. Erin, for example, is interested in the science behind climate change, such as biology or chemistry. And so is Rai. He did a full research project about coral bleaching, a major impact of climate change. From a young age, Kaulu was raised to have a love for the ocean and a deep, profound connection to the Aina, an integral part of the Hawaiian culture. He also loves to surf and other ocean-related activities and wanted to find a way to preserve the land and ocean around him. As for me, I'm the communications director for the Hawaii Youth Climate Coalition, a youth-led nonprofit organization dedicated to mitigating the climate crisis through advocacy and education. Of course, we've recognized the systemic roots of the climate crisis, but we also wanted to find a way for individuals to make a difference and feel like they could have an impact on their immediate community. The climate crisis is a real and serious emergency, impacting not only the environment, but also the food security, traditional practices, and livelihoods of millions of people. Our subscription boxes provide ways for users and their families to make a real, tangible difference in their community against this issue allowing them to reduce their carbon footprints, live more sustainable lifestyles, and even support businesses whose values align with theirs. Help us create this change. We're seeking financial support with a preferred investment of $1 million to be allocated towards facilities, development, and advertising. We're also seeking local business partners to provide products to be included in our boxes. Partnerships will allow us to provide a variety of products to our customers and also provide valuable exposure and advertising opportunities for you. Join us in creating a greener future for our communities and loved ones. Join Kaipuni Capsules. Together we can create this change. This is our QR code for our Instagram. I am now on your Instagram. It is beautiful. It is well branded and it has 307 followers. You all did an incredible job. You were all, all 24 of you working with pretty insane constraints of time, um, of not being with each other. And I am beyond amazed and proud of what you've come up with. Um, our first question comes in from um, Jackson Solomon. Some know him as Jack. Um, you mentioned that a major source of differentiation for your brand is your low pricing and variety of products. How will you keep lo costs low enough to sustain your business while keeping prices low for your customers? Uh, I guess I can take this one. So one, um, plan we had in mind was we were going to try partner with some local companies, um, smaller companies um, in our area and get their brand name out so that we could get like a discounted price for their products. Because if we're kind of advertising their products um, in our box, then they're going to get that free advertisement. So um, we we're hoping they would discount their prices for us and we would buy our products you know, in bulk from local vendors. Awesome. We have another question about crowdsourcing. Why does crowdsourcing or trying to inspire others through your product and through social media so vital? Um, I can take this one. Um, I genuinely think that we as people make the change that we want to see. And um, like if we support what we're doing and we believe in it, then change can happen. And inspiring people to make the difference, even if they feel they cannot, is like really crucial because they do have an impact and they do have a difference. They just have to be able to see it. They can teach their children and we're just perpetuating that for future generations as well. Uh, I'd like to add an anecdote to that. Uh, in this program, I, we'd be working from 
like eight thirty in the morning to nine at night, basically. And then, but between nine at night and the next day, I get pretty anxious and uh, overwhelmed uh, with just the projects in general, feeling like we weren't going to be able to make what we wanted to make. But then, joining back in at eight thirty and being a part of this group, uh, you really get that like overwhelming sense of like a power in the numbers to be able to do something. And I think everyone's projects has shown how crowdsourcing and coming together to create something is uh, a lot more manageable than you could think. Ryan, add on, tell me about your journey coming to Nalukai from the uncertainty and um, almost dystopian novel we all currently live in around the world and in Hawaii to that first day where you are now. Sure. Um, I wrote about this earlier in one of our reflections, but one of the reasons I applied to Nalakai was because I felt like I didn't have a good understanding of what it meant to have like a home, especially in Hawaii. And I uh, kind of felt like I was drifting in that way. And so like day one, day two, virtually being able to connect with all these people like so quickly and then having all these people come in to talk to us and kind of share why, why home is so important to them. Um, was kind of what made things click for me. And that's kind of why I understood, that's when I understood why I decided to go to Nalukai. I didn't really know it before, but I kind of figured it out along the way that that was the main reason that I wanted to be a part of this group. Thank you. This question is for Kaiulu. Um, we started the program um, with this journey story from, from Pua, um, from, and it, it was a really powerful narrative that's kind of gone throughout our entire program. Can you speak to um, how that story has played out for you across your Nalukai journey and right now? Um, that, was, that was an amazing story that Auntie Pua shared with us. Um, I think starting off, even before I came off this program, um, and we can relate it back to like the Va'a, Going and joining just this journey is kind of like nerve wracking a little bit. You don't know what's going to be out there, uncharted waters, um, especially if you never did it before. And actually getting on that canoe, sailing out into the ocean and being like, okay, I'm here. What do we got to do? And really throughout this process, I've grown together with my crew, everybody that has gone through this program with me. Um, my group and really just sailing to that final destination. And then in the future, also being able to do that journey again, sail that, that trip again. So we had so much emotion in this cohort. There was the night of vulnerability. There was joy. Um, there was excitement, nervousness, just doing this today. So just being able to grow closer as a group and um, go forward. Beautiful. Um, our next question comes directly from Susan Wu, an entrepreneur and educator. Hi, everyone. I'm calling in from Taiwan. I'm so impressed with everything you've presented today. It's incredible. Um, and I'm going to soon hopefully be a member of the Hawaiian community as I'm relocating there. Um, and one of my questions would be, how do we help you to get to the next stage of your ventures. What skills do you think that you want to continue to develop that you think that we as a community could help you foster, cultivate, and practice? What are those skills specifically? Jay, do you wanna answer that? Yes, I think that um, in terms of like very immediate things that we're, we would need is partnerships. I think that's creating a lot of connections in our community with local businesses and our community would really help us uh, create that foundation that we need to really uh, thrive and add this education into like integrate this education into our communities. Um, when uh, Auntie Kula Lincoln was here, she gave us a quote um, or in Olova Noel which is first is foundation and then the building. I think that our business model is really centered on our connections with, the, with our community and 
uh, just establishing this kind of bond is something that's really important to us right now. Thank right, you. you does oh, sorry. does anyone it. else does anyone else want to jump in with some thoughts about that? I think Jade said that really well. I don't want to try and go next after that. Rye, what else would you add? I mean, what what skills can we provide or others provide that help you carry this this journey and this venture and yourself forward? And Aaron, I might also just open it up. I think, Susan, if I, I love your question and thank you for asking it. Um, I'm wondering if, if that extends to other groups as well, not to, to anybody in the cohort, or are you asking specifically about this particular product? I'm asking about anyone in the cohort. I would love to help support the entire community of creators and founders here to get to the next level. How do we actually skill you up, right? What do you need to learn next? Great question. Thank you so much. Um, I guess I can I can add on to what Jade said. I know we're from the same group, but like, um, also, we need the community. We need people to um, like really be connected and find that inspiration in what we're doing, and like come to the beach cleanups. You know, like um, donate your time to whatever you can do, and just having them come together and like create action is what we need. Um, I think when it comes to Huli, I, I really think that what we said at the ending is true. We need you, right? We need, um, through Aaron Shorn, for example, amazing guy, amazing host, by the way, as well. And he was able to link us up with so many different connections and so many different people who are able to help us expand our product because because it's a, uh, we're so small in Hawaii and connections are really valuable. So if you had those connections to someone who'd be interested in being a mentor or someone who'd be interested in being able to like software develop this app or anything to that effect, we'd really appreciate it here at Hulia and that would make all the difference in the world. I think a lot would be um, networking as well and giving us platform to speak on. Nalaka has been a really great at doing that with this live stream, but if there are other ways that you could connect us with different platforms or different resources to speak out our ideas and pitch them. That would also be a tremendous help. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here and thank all the guests for being here. Um, we have a question that I love. It's a really difficult question for Kayapuni. Um, and I think it gets at how difficult our, our solutions and the problems we're looking at are. Um, Alan says, love the position, dot, dot, dot. But can you address the potential conflict between wanting to reduce carbon footprint and consumerism? Um, I think I got this one. So Go for it, Jade. <laughs> okay, wait, you made me lose my train of thought. Um, so I think in like our cap the list system, there's always going to be some, uh, I guess, issue with trying to balance consumerism and trying to create an impact in our community that's sustainable and equitable. Um, it's always very hard to try to think about that, especially in a business standpoint, point like uh, cost of input. Oh my gosh, if we have employees, how are we going to do that? Um, how much should we charge for this? How will we make our product accessible to our community, right? Um, so I think at our business model um, in the system form, its value is not in the products that we provide, but more so the education and consistent awareness that our products give to the people who subscribe to our, to our program, program, our company. Um, if it's okay with Dyson, I'd like to use him as an example for, um, just to show the impact. Is it okay, Dyson? It's not. Okay. Um, I'd like to use him as, as an example to show the impact that education can have on one person and how that one person can impact their community and the world. So um, I work with Dyson through our uh, environmental organization, the HYCC, which was briefly mentioned in our presentation. And uh, something about Dyson is that like he was politicized through education. I believe the Ocean Heroes Boot Camp. Yeah. Um, so just this one like educational opportunity for Dyson gave him so many tools and the drive for action that we so desperately need in our community. And 
uh, a couple years later, Dyson has been totally instrumental in, wow, yeah, Dyson, I do know you, <laughs> but Dyson has been totally instrumental in the passing of all these bills, um, Bill 40, you know, the banning of single-use plastics on Oahu, um, Bill 25, creating a cleaner uh, source of energy for Hawaii. Uh, he's been totally instrumental and really significant in that in the legislature. legislature. So I think what our company brings isn't necessarily a product or a group of products, but a connection, community, and education for individuals that can create real change in the system. Thank you for your question. Jay, thank you for that beautiful response. Um, I, I wanna thank all of you for sharing out um, a part of your um, hearts and souls and minds and skills with this entire audience. Um, that'll be viewing this live and recorded in the future. You all did an incredible job. And I think we live in a society that in many cases doesn't believe in the power of youth or believes that the power of youth will be made manifest in the future. I think you proved today that we need to believe in the power of youth now and make it actionable. And a huge mahalo for doing that. You all have an ability to change the world. You already have. And I can't wait to see what happens next. David. I'm, um, I'm uh, the cohort will know I get these every once in a while. I have these little overwhelmed moments and I'm having one right now. And Jade, you're just dropping the mic, just kind of um, just uh, exemplifies like th those kind of moments that we get to have every once in a while um, that pop up during Nalukai. It has been such an honor to, um, to spend this afternoon with you. I hope that, um, I hope that everybody um, watching today um, got to see your passion as, as, as I got to see your passion. Um, I have one or two questions for you. Um, and then um, Susan, I may have an, an, uh, an answer of my own for your question. Um, at one point during camp, and this, this reflects our, our values, we think that an understanding um, at a, at a significant and authentic level, um, a knowledge of Hawaiian culture uh, is important. It's vital if you're gonna be doing business here. Um, we think that there's a reverence and a respect that is needed that hasn't always been shown to this incredible place or the people um, who originated here or, or who, who live here now. Um, and so when Poole Lincoln told you um, the other morning, um, the story of Pele and and, and Hi'iaka and Pele sending her sister to Kauai to go retrieve a man that she had dreamed about. And Hi'iaka as the youngest sister feeling ill-equipped and not ready and not sure that she could, could make this perilous journey that her sister was asking her to make. She, um, Pele told her over and over, the, susten the sustenance you need lies ahead. Um, would someone be willing to explain what that quote what that saying might mean to you and what sustenance did you discover you had um, or developed through this experience? Um, so if, actually, no, you go, go. <laughs> okay, um, for me, it's kind of like just saying that everything that we need is in the journey ahead and we learn and we fail and we learn again. And it's just, it's a process of building each other up and learning from one another in the journey that we do, because in the end, all the things that we've collected benefit us in the end and really just helps us to be a better person, better individual, better friend, and just um, have a better impact on our community. And Kayulu, thank you for that. What's what's one um, what's one thing you realized you had, or something that you felt like you developed in this journey, on this journey? Um, I think leadership for me was something that I redeveloped because in school I was always placed into the group where nobody nobody really cared except for me, and I was taking the top load. I was doing all the presentations, I was doing all the work. And then I kind of the, created this sense of leadership that I thought was working, where I was taking the lead and everybody would just like hang along. And 
now coming to this program, I see so many people that are so motivated, so inspired by everything, have the passion and the drive to do anything they really want to. And being able to work alongside them has been like really, really like, it's been stressful, but like not as stressful as um, if I was working alone. So I just want to say thank you to everybody because that was definitely an experience and I appreciate it. Thank you, Kayulu. Jessica. Um, I think Kayulu hit the nail on the head with that. That was like so well said. Um, I think something that I noticed what with the sustenance was a lot of it wasn't just the resources that you guys provided, but it was the people. Um, I don't think I, I couldn't personally say I never would have been able to create that if it hadn't been for like the facilitators, if it hadn't been for the team leaders and my team itself and just everybody here in such a supportive group. And I think that was pretty cool is to be able to recognize that it's not just like resources and people that give you sustenance. Um, actually, not, not just resources like items, it's the people like and the people like some of the most important things. Thank you, Jessica. What's one thing that you realized that you already had or that you developed or real or through this experience, um, you you found you already had. Um, okay, this one kind of sounds like kind of like not super interesting, but I, I really liked the way that I was able to share ways in ways that I hadn't before. Um, normally I only share ideas that I think will work perfectly or I only share things that I think will make people happy and I don't like sharing things that are extremely personal to me and suddenly I learned that like okay the people can help me decipher this people can help me work through this and use it to a positive advantage and that was like really fun to be able to learn. Thank you Jessica. So I want to thank all of you and I hope that you discovered through this today um, with a real life audience as far afield as um, Taiwan, um, the east coast of the continent, um, California, um, and across our Hawaiian islands. Um, I hope you all discovered that you already have the sustenance that you need for that which is ahead. Um, that obviously is our, is our goal in what we do. Um, I want to pivot for just a moment and talk a little bit about Nalukai. Um, we run Nalukai as a free program for each participant. Um, because of the generosity of, of some corporate partners, um, like Alaska Airlines and the Hawaii Community Foundation, um, West Hawaii Concrete, um, we are able to gather the money for this and run it as a free program to everybody that um, gets accepted. Um, in addition, we ensure that every student has the technology to be able to do this, especially in a year like this. Um, and so in, in most years, every student is provided a laptop. This year, three of our cohort members um, voluntarily gave, um, said that they didn't need a, uh, a laptop and that actually allowed us to take three more people into the cohort and we're, thr we we're thrilled about that. Um, I can't even imagine without it. So thank you um, for those of you who did that. Um, it allows us to do our work. We've been told by many people many times that we should switch over to a, um, a tuition model and run this as a, um, a camp that is, um, that is paid for. Um, and that distresses us greatly and we don't wanna do that because we think that the diversity of um, we think the diversity of our program is paramount. We think that people coming from different backgrounds, from public schools, private schools, charter schools, home schools, really important. Diversity in location, where people are from, whether you're from the city or, or from a more rural location, um, all of these are different forms of diversity. Um, and it, it becomes really apparent to us in looking at the problem spaces with you all that it's foolhardy to think about um, not inviting to the table as diverse a group of people as possible to come up with solutions to problems that Hawaii faces. Um, so we want to continue doing that. And this is where, um, this is where I take out uh, my hat. Maybe I can borrow one from um, one of the Kayapuni Capsules uh, teams. Um, this is where we say, please donate to Nalukai. Um, not you all founders. Um, you invest in your own companies, please. But um, for other people um, on, that happen to be with us today, um, please go to the, the Nalukai website, nalukai.org, um, or contact me directly, um, david at nalukai.org, 
Your generosity helps us do what we do, and we would like to do more of it. When we can crowdsource the problems that young people in Hawaii say that they want to solve, and we believe we have a methodology to help them work together to do so, um, it becomes imperative um, that we that I ask today for support. As uncomfortable it is, as it is for me on the heels of just watching these presentations, um, I wanna say that, that community support allows us to do what we do. And um, to the extent that even in these, in these really tough times, you can help us with that, we would certainly appreciate it. We would like to be able to work um, not just during these um, 15 days with our founders, but to be able to um, build out our alumni network and build the support necessary so that as these businesses, as these students come up with other ideas that they want to do, um, that we can be there to continue to help them. Um, we do the best we can in being responsive um, and helping students with college recommendations and advice and companies as they start to form them. But um, it's, um, we would like to do it more, more often and around the year. So I guess, Susan, that's, that's part of my answer to your question is we would like to be able to do this more year round with this group and others and amplify um, this voice that I think is um, not always taken seriously and certainly underestimated. Um, getting a chance to work with the, these students over the last 15 days has, um, has shown us just what they're capable of and how eager they are um, to, in essence, as Nainoa, uh, talked about and Kea um, talked about and Jasmine talked about, they would like to grab the mic. They would like to jump in and solve the problems. They're ready. They're eager. Um, all of these students um, are eager to do that. They want to solve the problems that they didn't create, that my generation and earlier generations created or at least didn't solve. And I think it's tremendously generous. And so if, um, if anyone watching today has that inclination, please, please be generous as well. And let's amplify um, the opportunities that these young people have. Um, I think we need them desperately. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, Mr. Shorn, as always, wonderful job emceeing. Can we give a shout out to Mr. Shorn, please? Who on, on, the, uh, on the mic is pretty magnificent. Um, I also want to thank everybody else, um, the facilitators, the people who redesigned this program this year um, or improved the program year after year. Every founder who has gone through Nalukai um, since 2016, um, your experience has allowed us to make this program better and better. And this year, uh, I believe that the 2020 cohort um, took it to a whole new level, uh, even with the challenges that they had of not being able to convene in person. Um, it has been my sincere honor, and I know we still have two days, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rock those last two days, and and you know just uh, give us all a send off to what's next. Um, but I want to thank you. I also want to thank the speakers um, who aren't necessarily part of our our staff, but generously give their time um, to uh, to come spend time with us at Nalukai. Um, specifically, Alan Moribayashi. Um, a, um, a systems problem solver um, and a uh, questioner supreme um, who pushes us all to think um, really deeply about what we're uh, putting together and with a great deal of um, integrity. Um, Kanoa Castro, who came and, and spoke with you all about Mele Murals and the community art project and helped us see how community art projects and community events, um, cultural uh, events are very entrepreneurial in nature because it's about galvanizing a group of people around a vision and raising resources um, and putting it out there in the world. And anytime anyone comes to Waimea, please go by the Kahilu Theater and go and look at those murals that you all had a chance to, to look at. I wanna thank Justin Achong, filmmaker, um, who met, worked with the cohort on visual storytelling, Sydney Wicking uh, and her multidimensional leadership model and, and uh, the hero's journey that she, she laid out working with you, as well as the cultural practitioners who spent mornings with us, um, Kalua Castro, Hua Lincoln, Uncle Kaohi, um, who each had wisdom to share, mana'o to share um, with you. And the culminating event of that um, is, is today. Um, also to Mark Lay uh, from the Four Seasons Marketing Director who spoke with you all and has given you great feedback on your projects and your marketing, all that work that you all did to create brands, logo, the look of the presentations you did today. Um, 
for anybody out there, the students did all of that. Uh, they created their logos, their names, their brands, all of it. And it has, um, it's been so much fun to watch you guys do what you do. Um, and if, if we have been some small part of amplifying your ambitions or showing you what's possible um, by helping you work with each other, then, then, then we have done our work. And um, I ask for anybody who would like to, to please help us continue to do so. Thank you, everybody. Um, Mr. Shorn, is there anything else you, that we need to add at this point? Or yes, we, uh... we, we have a wonderful video to kind of um, outro us out. Thank you. Um, you're so welcome, David Clark. Um, I just, I want to do a huge, huge, huge mahalo to David Clark for his role. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm just cutting an onion. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> for his role as executive director, for his vision, for the amount of hours and blood, sweat, and tears he puts into this. David, thank you so much. Jack Solomon, will you um, share a video and we'll have um, just some closing thoughts. Right on, coming right up. I've seen like quite a lot of people coming from very different backgrounds. I see Dyson coming from like homeschool and I know one coming from Kamehameha. Yeah, it's very interesting to get us all together and just talk, just have conversation. You don't get that every day. And it's very different speaking with uh, peers from other schools and other types of school. Well, I noticed a lot of us are from different islands. Yeah, we got a Kobo, some Big Island, some in Maui, some in Oahu, and um, one in Kauai. It's really interesting to see how a bunch of our backgrounds play into the way we think and the types of solutions we come up with. I guess my connection to Hawaii is really with the land and the people. I, I really do consider Hawaii home and the people who live on it family. I think if there's one thing I can share that I really, really love, it's the ocean. I grown up going to the ocean, I probably have more memories from the ocean than any other place. It's always been hard to identify uh, with my culture and my sense of identity. When I talk to people like Kailu or Josh, both Joshes, um, and those who just have a really deeply rooted sense of culture, yeah, it was a great experience. So, so far what I've felt now that I taught is rather than focusing on entrepreneurship, it's really been focused on building yourself as a human, as someone who is going to be taking on these issues or already are taking on these issues. The Nalukai is just so special in a sense that they really want people that are willing to serve their communities and have a vision and commit to it. And I think it goes back to a lot of the talks that we've had so far um, that relate to, you know, opening yourself and being vulnerable, knowing where your goals are, having strong foundations before you set sail on your journey. And so I feel like Nalakai, by building us in that manner, um, is really helping with us in achieving our goals, you know, making this the kind of place that we love, making us feel like we belong here in Hawaii and that there's always gonna be a group of people, a community that's here to help you out at every turn. Uh, it was very interesting getting back uh, like to a very positive type of environment where we encourage each other. Very uplifting, I would say. On like the first couple of days in the Hawaii, you got to meet and work with people who had really well-constructed and diverse sets of skills. But the encouragement through team building exercises and all the projects we've done, everybody ensured me that I had something to bring to the table. The ideation process was super fun. It was just so interesting to see everyone's creative processes and like where their mind takes them when they have that space to be creative. On the first day, I felt like that band-aid was ripped off immediately when we had the food truck assignment because they just throw you into the real world. Although we're doing this totally digitally, I think that I've learned so much <laughs> through this process of just trying 
and failing, but learning from those experiences and just getting my hands dirty and like doing a lot of the research by myself and like collaborating with other people. I didn't expect the online experience to be this good. Being on Zoom right now, I don't know, it, it, feels, it feels like the, the uh, core message, the core meaning of this program is not lost. This global pandemic has been so disruptive to so many. Can you imagine being a teenager in 2020? To be told you need to stay home for a day, for a week, for a month, for multiple months. When we decided to run Nalukai Academy's summer startup program virtually, we did so because we didn't want to ask kids to put their goals on hold. We didn't want them to put their aspirations on the back burner. We believed that we could offer them what we've offered for five summers. A chance to come together, to connect, to tell their stories, to problem solve together, to figure out the challenges Hawaii will face in the next 10 years, and develop solutions. The young people with whom we've had the chance to work have shown us the power of this generation. They want to solve problems. And so we've done what we can do to help them do so. We're so proud of them. And I'm so proud to be part of this organization that challenges young people to form solutions. So much work all of you have put into this over the past very few days. So we came up with this idea of a carpooling app. Instagram page. We want to turn over Hawaii's education. And that's just the option to join our team. Awesome, that was amazing. We will bridge the gap. We created a Facebook account, a Twitter, and an Instagram. Woo! <laughs> Well, that was incredible. Um, just from a videography standpoint, from a storytelling standpoint, um, I just want to I want to close with this moment that I remember having with David and Austin. Um, I'll try to power through the emotions. Where where Austin said, "Why can't we take everyone that applied?" <clears throat> and uh, that's our goal. <clears throat> our goal is to be able to do that. And this was so much more <clears throat> than a tech or entrepreneurship program. This is a new way of learning. And this is a new way of, of um, building together. And I hope that we can take this schema and this framework and um, carry it forth. And I hope that you as founders can go forth um, over the next two days and over the rest of your lives and continue this journey with us. Mahalo. And so ends the Nalukai Showcase of Learning and Pitch Day. Mahalo, everyone, for coming. Um, David, 